I'm Holly Constant. And I'm Maddie Hockaday. We really love Parks and Rec, and we really love behind-the-scenes details. So we're researching everything from DVD extras like deleted scenes and commentaries, plus interviewing cast and crew who actually worked on the show. We also bring on guests and friends to geek out about everything parks. So join us, you tropical fish. This is literally the best Parks and Rec rewatch podcast. We're your park pals. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. Okay, cool. Let's do it. We're here. We're doing it. This is like such a huge episode. Oh my God. We've been waiting, I think, to do this episode since we first started. (laughs) 100%. This is probably the episode I've seen the most times. Uh Um, I feel like everybody has, um, like for me, if anybody hasn't seen The Office and they like try to watch the first season and they're like, oh, I hate this. Um, I always tell them to go watch Stress Relief when Mm. Dwight does the fire thing. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is my episode for Parks and Rec. Like, if you haven't seen it and you kind of want to get a vibe, like, this is a really good episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. I have a lot of tidbits because I was like, this, I have to, like... This is, I have to represent my love for this episode. Yeah, totally. This was one that didn't um, take me as long, I feel. I mean, I still, it took me as long. That's a lie. I don't know how to even phrase it. Basically, I just like knew every word that was going to come up. So I didn't really have to like be so shocked by what was happening or not even shocked, but just like, oh, right. I forgot that they did that. Like I knew everything that was going to happen. So yeah, Um, 100%. Totally. Okay, well, let's get started. Um, The Fight, Season 3, Episode 13. This was directed by our guy, Randall Einhorn, who we know from The Office and Parks, but also Abbott Elementary, which if you haven't watched yet, you need to watch it. Have you watched it yet? I haven't, but it's funny because you've told me, and now Daniela, one of my other bridesmaids, she... She told me, oh, like, my God, you would really like this. So I have to put it on the the list right now. I'm trying to get Ivan to start friends from the beginning because he has never seen every episode. Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, they are both on HBO. The first season of Abbott Elementary is on HBO. However, the most recent ones like season two and up till now are on Hulu. So they are available for us. OK, but I hate how they do that, though, like when seasons are split up on different. Yeah, platforms. I mean, Hulu has season one as well. Um, it's just oh, okay. like if you don't have the paid version, then you have to sit through ads. So there's that. But um, but no, it's so good. I started watching it before Thanksgiving, I think. And my mom watches it because it's still on network TV and she watches all the network shows. Um, but like I was so shocked because it's so like a lot of the similar crew for The Office and Park. So it's very, very mockumentary, same kind of style. Um the Quinta Brunson is the creator of it and she plays Janine the main gal and she um is very Leslie and then the main dude uh William something or other uh I forgot his name but I follow him on Instagram and uh he is very Ben oriented because he will always look to Cameron and be like and they're in the middle of their and you'll like see it but they're kind of in the middle of their like um will they won't they situation and it's so lovely that's where we're at. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and Quinta Brunson and William just won um, a Golden Globe for the show. So super oh, exciting. Congratulations. That's I know. exciting. So I great. That. Um, but anyway, Randall Einhorn is one of the main producers and directors on that show, as he is on this show and The Office. Um, so definitely get on that. And then, of course, this was written by our queen, Amy Poehler. Like, literally, what the F? She's our goddess. I can't ha- handle, like, how perfect she is as I was watching this. Like, she, this is her mm-hmm. second episode. Just a friendly reminder that she also wrote Telethon. On. So, I mean, these are insane. It's crazy. I saw an article when I was doing research that said Amy Poehler wrote and directed this. And I went hmm. back and I was like looking and it was like, no, she didn't. But I'm just wondering when when you're the main person and you're writing the episode, how much input do you get on the show? Like, I wonder if that's just kind of what they were kind of hinting at in that yeah article. maybe like, I found a lot of articles that were false actually as well like okay. there were some articles that said things that weren't true like we'll get there when we get there um, because mm-hmm. there was um, fun fact great uh, segue that there was commentary on this one which was super yes. exciting um, Amy Poehler Mike Schur and Adam Scott were in it I really wanted Rashida to be on it so she could talk to her yeah. moments but that's okay um, but yeah she like confirmed some stuff that I found in articles that I was like they might just be doing that to, I don't know, just what they thought they heard or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. 
But that's okay. She, I mean, she's still a queen goddess, and she might as well have directed it. But no, Randall was was very instrumental in making those like spy shots happen and all the cuts and stuff like that. Um, I just have to say also, and we always say this, but I have to say how amazing Amy Poehler is um, because on every single commentary, she can tell you so many behind the scenes details that are obviously interesting to us, but I feel like that no one else would really say, like, even though they knew it, they might not think it's like worth saying, but she does. Mm -hmm. And she also um, has like... Every time she's had a commentary, she also always comments on the uh, the guest actors. Like she knows their first and last names. She knows that like who they are and what they've done, and she always compliments them and says that they're funny. And I'm just like, oh, this is so amazing. What to a hear. human! Yeah. I mean, we've got we've gotten clarification from like everyone we've interviewed that she's just wonderful. But I think that's just another testament to it because when you're the star, like how. She paid attention to that. Yeah. Like, and she didn't even have um, scenes with all the guest stars. Right. Right. So, so she just like knew them. Um, I mean, she wrote for them, so I'm sure she had like some sort of, uh, you know, say in casting, but still it's, it's amazing to hear that. Um, yeah. The other thing is, which doesn't really matter at all, and maybe you found this in your notes too, but I read that this episode had less views than Eagleton, which is yes. like so far from my truth now because I did I have watched the fight way more than I've watched Eagleton now and it's so it's really fascinating to me and obviously this doesn't matter but yeah no but I found that too because it was 4.5 million for this one and it was over 5 million for Eagleton um, views and it's hard for me to rationalize in my head kind of what that is now because we just stream everything Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of hard because also how many people DVR do, does that count as a view? I don't know. I'm really not sure. Because DVR was definitely a thing back then. Yeah. You know, I tried to see if there's like anything else like big happening at that time. You know how like sometimes like the the Super Bowls that week or whatever right. the fuck. And that's why people didn't watch. But I couldn't like really feel out why people would have watched. Yeah. Not, not watched. So. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if there's anything we've learned, it's that the like critics and the views don't really matter to the audience. They just matter to the network. So it's mm-hmm. really weird. But um, speaking of like what else was airing, did you see that they this one was a two show night where they aired back to back episodes? They ran Road Trip directly after this one. Did they really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So apparently I did not see that. Yeah, so this aired originally in May 2011, and this season uh, started late, apparently. So Mm -hmm. they were squeezing them all in for like three episodes or so. They had to, or three three weeks rather, they had to put two episodes together to make it all line up with the Mm -hmm. rest of the season or the rest of the network's like programming or whatever. Um, So that's really fascinating to me. (laughs) That's, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not like not looking at you on purpose. I'm like thinking no, through what that like did the maybe this will be a next week thing. But did Road Trip have the same views or did people drop off after watching? Oh, the fight good question. Too? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's hard for me because if, to me, the fight is such a standalone. Mm-hmm. It is episode that it's like I would have rather you put Road Trip and I can't remember what's right after that. But back to back especially because of what happens at the end of road trip right 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 well Although, that could have been their strategy sorry I don't, yeah this could have been their strategy for them to end this night and have you wait well the and- thing the, the way that I was reading it slash the way that it seemed to be was that they didn't really it wasn't really about the story so much like they didn't care mm. if they left you on a cliffhanger or whatever it was just they needed to make sure that the episodes lined up with the network's programming so that by the time mm. the end of the season came around they weren't like oh wait we still have three episodes we have left to air but like we don't have any more time because now we're on our hiatus or whatever mm. so yeah. it wasn't really about the story it was more about just squeezing everything in <laughs> That's fair. Although I just would would have thought that they would put, and this might not have been the creators, it might have been the network, like putting thought into what's airing with what. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I just, yeah. I guess I didn't really care that much. So. (laughs) It is what it is. Anyway, those are my um, little tidbits. So, what'd you say? I said I'm overanalyzing as usual. Oh, no. I mean, that's what we do here. So, no (laughs) surprise there. (laughs) But um, anyway, those are my little tidbit moments and behind the scenes, and I'll sprinkle some more commentary stuff in as we go. But um, now I have summary written, so I'm ready whenever. Awesome. Okay. So 
It is about to get drunk up in Pawnee. Tom <laughs> recruits the Parks and Rec Department to help him sell his new liquor, Snake Juice, at the Snake Hole Lounge. While getting high on their own supply, everyone gets a little crazy and emotions fly. Leslie finds a way to have Anne at City Hall on a more regular basis, which sparks a tiff in their rock-solid friendship. Wow, that was a great summary. Thank you. I've got a little... A little sprinkles in there yeah i feel like it was very creative and funny but also like you got the details yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome well this cold open is the famous broken coffee pot cold open um fun fact this was not originally aired on tv no way this is a producer's cut and this is so crazy it. to me because no one remembers not having this in this episode. Everyone knows no, this know. cold open. <laughs> it's so fascinating. I love this. This is probably one of my top three favorite cold opens, too. So, like, they just, for me personally, they hit this entire episode out of the park for oh, me. Oh, totally. Because it, it's so funny. It's so Ron. It's so yeah. Leslie. Um, and then you get to see little bits of people's character that you wouldn't necessarily totally. see it differently. So, yeah, uh, they they need a new coffee maker anyway like what fucking decade is this from oh my god <laughs> well it's the same one i feel like that they had in the office break room too uh, that must have just been the thing huh no but the office had one of the ones where the thingy like the home ones oh yeah like in the, the yeah in the kitchen but in the break in the room kitchen thing they had oh the same you're one. right you know you're right I mean? in the break room yeah yeah i get what you're saying but still yeah it's yeah it's i really just funny. feel like and I don't I don't remember when Keurigs were a thing, but oh like God, yeah. it's like most offices have Keurigs now. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I was just like, this is such a contraption. I feel like even the kitchen one that they have in the office, just the pot one would have been better. Totally. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Very government feeling, I feel, or like corporate mm. feeling or whatever. Um, yeah. But just as a friendly reminder for those that don't remember it, uh, Ron is asking who broke this coffee machine and everyone starts blaming each other. Um, and Leslie keeps trying to say that she broke it to your point of like you're seeing everybody's like personality and how they would handle the situation. Um, my favorite personally is when Ben blames Donna. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I, was I was talking like, what about. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like we we get to see a little bit of everybody's personality that comes out a little bit because Jerry is like harped on all the time. But he's going to have the balls to say April was the last one over there. Yeah, totally. You know? And and Ben's such a team player most of the time, like and a leader. He's a leader in this office. He's mm -hmm. supposed to be. And he's like, Donna's being awfully quiet. Well, it's so funny because he knows Donna and Donna's personality. Yeah. <laughs> so to do that right in front of her seems That's like so very true. bold. Very, it's very bold. Insane, because yeah. she's right there. But then we learn that Ron is the one who actually broke it, but he likes to keep people on his toes. And that line of it burned his hand, so he punched it was so funny. That's, yeah, it burned my hand, so I punched it. It's one of, I have so many favorite lines, and this is going to be so hard. I know. I um, think we might have to do multiples for this, because this is too much. <laughs> yeah, and I have another thought about that later, too. But it, this The, the favorite line thing, or the burned his yes, hand? Yes, oh, okay. for, a, for a favorite line thing. Okay, got it. Um, An idea. Okay. Um. Because that's just so wrong. The note I had underneath it, I got ahead of myself. The note I had at that point is it looks like that thing broke itself. <laughs> yeah, totally. Of how old it is. Um, oh my god, that's so yeah, true. I love that. I love that Leslie's like, you know, uh, let me pay for it. Let mm -hmm. me let me pay for it. Like yeah. not just I broke it. Like let's find a solution. She's like, I'll fix all of it. Yeah, I'll just Sorry, take care Leslie. of it. It's fine. And yeah. I love how Ron immediately is like, Nope, you didn't. And but it's just so funny. Um, did you hear the laugh at the end of the cold yeah. open? <gasps> yes. Okay, that was my I hear thing. that every I, time I, I watch it. And I'm always like, am I hearing things? No, you're not. And Donna also says whatever. And then almost immediately after, Leslie laughs. Yeah, so there's so, an extended version of this in the deleted scenes um, where you hear ooh. way more of them fighting and bickering. And they're totally like improvising with what they like fighting with each other kind of thing while Ron is having his talking head. So like I from that I can hear or I can understand why Donna you'd be able to hear her say whatever because there's longer version of that. But I still don't I don't know. That's so funny. Like why? I guess they just couldn't make it work to edit out the laugh which is fine because yeah it's interesting you've heard it every time because I've only heard it the last like two or three times I've watched it mm. for the podcast like mm -hmm. I haven't really necessarily been clued into the fact that I hear someone laugh mm -hmm. um but it checks out because they're still acting in the background Leslie's trying to mediate so 
I mean, she probably just broke somebody yeah, totally. did something. So, which is kind of cool. I like that we have those little moments throughout. Yeah, you know, the, totally the episodes that are like that. I love that. Um, and then just to mention it, Ron says he expects them all to have war paint and um, a pig's head on a stick. That is a reference to Lord of the Flies, in case anyone wanted to know. I'm sure you all read that in high school at some point. <laughs> I didn't have to, but yeah, I have I know the premise. Definitely a, an American literature thing, so maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we had, this is not important, but we had um, four different books you could choose from. Mm. And everybody was like bro- broken into different groups that would have to give uh, a presentation on the book they read or whatever. Do you remember the books? <sighs> Mine was a Chinese novel. Mm. Pearl Pearl was her name who wrote it. I mm. still have the book because oh. I accidentally stole it. <laughs> the school on accident. Nice. Um but yeah, Lord of the Flies was one of them. Okay. And I know for sure cuz it was a I was like who who let high schoolers read this book? Yeah. Or middle schoolers read this book. Um but yeah, I read um Pearl S. Buck was her name. Pearl S. Buck. Yeah, it was about, she was a missionary and oh. grew up in China. And so she wrote it kind of per, from that perspective. Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, Tom is saying he needs everyone to come to the snake hole lounge to help him with something. And literally everyone is like grumbling and saying no. Donna says she's on a cleanse, which I feel like was such a throwaway line because she says it at the end, which is so funny. Mm-hmm. I, why? <laughs> What are cleanses? I mean, I've heard of cleanses before, right? But yeah. like, I, I will get more into it because it comes up later in the episode too. But every time she says that, I'm like, why? At first, I think it's like just to get out of having to do this. Right. But then like yeah. it comes up later and you're like, why? Maybe she does it or maybe they wrote that so that someone would be able to drive them, <laughs> which is hilarious. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny. But it does kind of sound like a fake excuse too. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Um. So snake juice, our famous snake juice is here. This is the new liquor that Tom is promoting. Um, I love April's line, too, where it sounds like you took a snake and twisted it like a rag until its blood and guts came out. Because to be fair, it does sound like that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, she's not wrong. And I love Andy's little reaction to it, too. He's like laughing, but also saying, ew, it's really funny to me. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Chris Pratt in this episode. I know. They just, uh, their, their love is so pure. It's so cute. It really is. And I obviously have more notes about that. I also just love that. And the we get this polar opposites between Andy and April, as we always do. But mm-hmm. like in this specifically, April could care less about snake juice. She could care less if Tom likes her. Mm-hmm. She could care less about everything. And Andy's like, we got to get to that meeting because I do not want to be on Tom's done so list. Yes, <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, my God. We got to make that list. And like he's the yeah. only one that cares. Oh, yeah. I love that. Oh, I meant to tell you, um, this is in my notes. It's a bit random, but I did do the math um, according to when this episode came out. And I don't mm-hmm. think um, Amy Poehler was pregnant as our talking about it last week. I think okay. when I was watching it um, now, again, if Amy Poehler or anyone who knows is listening, then you tell me. But I'm pretty positive. We talked about this before where that era in like the early ish 2000s from like. Especially the last, like, five years between, or not last five years, but, like, the five years of the first, um, like, seasons of the show was that Mm -hmm. time when the shirts were, like, cinched right underneath your boobs and, like, the rest of the shirt fell, like, straight forward as if it was, like, almost like a maternity, like, shirt. But it never, but it's not, but that was just the style. I really feel like, like you said, it was her shirt. Yeah. And it just could have been, like, a weird angle, too. Yeah. Like. But so 100 percent. Yeah. Anyway. I'm glad you, you found that, though. Yeah, because I was doing the math on like when it actually came out and then when she had her kid and it was like two years or a year and a half. And I was like, mm, I don't think so. But yeah, I could be wrong. Who knows? I, I can I will I will be corrected. Open to that. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, Tom says this it, like liqueur that he made snake juice is Kahlua style. And Leslie's like, what the F does that even mean? And I love that it just means sugar and coffee and quote, some other junk. I love that yeah. so much. Like what some other junk. is the other junk? <laughs> uh, yeah. Tom, uh, that's yeah. Cause I feel like with Tom uh, now where we're at with him, it's less about the product and more about how he's selling it mm-hmm, to him. Totally. He gets a little bit more understanding about, after the 720 situation, he yes. gets more like, okay, I have to have a good product and a good marketing work. plan. Where yeah. dreams come, they come true. They come true. <laughs> um, now I'm at where Leslie and Anne are hanging out, if you are. Yes. 
at okay. the hospital. Um, you right? mean at City Hall on the bench? Leslie oh, I'm so there. sorry. Yeah, I have I have hospital written because Anne is saying she's getting sick of the hospital. Oh, yes, yes. So they're sorry. finally meeting and they're hanging out, drinking coffee, mm-hmm. saying it's been a while. Leslie is like, okay, let's start with the personal stuff. Anne doesn't even remember the last guy that she was dating or Leslie like thinks that she was dating or mm-hmm. whatever, which I thought that that was funny. And the whole of whole line of like, I just couldn't deal with his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Says Anne. <laughs> I love that. I really so love funny. that. It's honest. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. And she's dating so. around. She's doing her thing. So like, she's just like, I'm not into that guy. So that's fine. But mm-hmm. Leslie did loan this fellow a book and she asks if she could get it back. But apparently Anne told him that she was going out of the country. So like, she'd have to call him from a different number and it would be really weird. But I'm like, Anne, just buy her a new book. Yeah. Or, you know, Facebook Messenger or have yeah. Leslie reach out to him. There were a lot of other options here. And there, I mean, as we go through this episode, you know, there are things that Leslie's doing and things that Anna is doing that are frustrating and that are causing the fight that we yes. have. Um, and and this is kind of where I see, like, I, I, I know Anne's a really good friend, but she's kind of missing the, there's missing a mark here that this meant something to Leslie and that Leslie feels slighted by this. Yeah. Yeah. Like getting out of that relationship and not texting a guy she probably went on two dates with is more important than Leslie getting the book she wants back. Yeah, well, and it's also really interesting to me that, like, they weren't really, like, I don't know. I guess it's just their relationship, but sh- they weren't really dating, but yet Leslie still met him and had time to loan mm-hmm. her him a book. But anyway, I mean, this, it's just really interesting to me because, like, even if you didn't date this guy or it doesn't matter how long it was, it was just like, that's um, not the point. The point is that right. she needs the book back because <laughs> it's hers. Right. Well, but. and we know Leslie didn't lend the book to the guy for the guy. She did it for Anne. Mm, interesting. You know? Or she did like, it for herself because <laughs> she was just like, I love this book. So just like she does with Anne. So we need yeah, to yeah, true. Um, but I mean, one of the things that they mention in the commentary and something that we noticed as well, I'm sure, as we were watching it, is that it's such a slow burn. And one of the things that they mentioned as well was that it's like such a good representation of a fight between women because we're always trying so hard to not uh, be confrontational or like not real, uh, like just be supportive still, but yet there's still something wrong. So this is kind of the start of where that is, which I think is really funny and like very yeah. accurate. Yeah. I don't know if guys realize, but if we get emotional about things, a lot of times people are like, oh, you're crazy or you're PMSing. And it's yeah. like, I'm allowed to have emotions and be upset about things. Yes. So yes, I see that starting here. Yeah. Um, I love that Anne says that she's now dating someone who's a triple Pisces and that's why Leslie would love him. <laughs> I looked this up because oh, really? I was like, what the hell is a triple Pisces? Um, it is when your sun sign, your moon sign mm-hmm. and your rising sign are all Pisces. Mm-hmm. I have little to no idea what that means. Pisces is, um, well, first of all, Pisces I, are very I know feeling. what that is. They're okay. very feeling the emotional Pisces people. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what that. So like if you're a triple Pisces, woof, I can't imagine all the emotions that you're feeling. But um, yeah, the sun, your sun, your moon and your rising or whatever the hell are all different ways that you react to situations. So apparently my, okay. my sun sign is your month or your birth month or whatever, as you know. So like mine is okay. cancer, um, which to be frank, I don't like always relate to the cancer. Um, I, I do. I did a lot. But I think I also border on the Leo because mine's like at the end of July. But mm. anyway, and then my rising apparently is Pisces, which is, again, very emotional, very feeling. So I relate to that. Um, but also, I don't know what my I forgot what my rising is. I did my birth chart one time and a lot of it was very accurate and it was way more detailed than like what a magazine horoscope would give you that kind of thing. Mm. So like. I don't know. <laughs> it is. How, how do you find out your? Because I'm interested. Mm-hmm. How do you find out your moon sign and your rising sign? They have charts online where you like put in your birth date, and you have to be very specific about the time because that's when like the Earth is revolving around the planets and all. Or you know what I mean? Not the mm-hmm. Earth revolving around the planets, the Sun. You know what I mean? Like when the Earth is revolving yeah, around the Sun. I knew you were talking about. Um, 
And so you have to put in your birth time and a t- like a minute could make a difference. Um, but yeah, there's free there's free ones online. And then there's obviously there's this gal named um, Heidi Robbins Rose or Heidi Rose Robbins. I can't remember. She's like a famous astrologer. And she's a great follow on Instagram, too, because she'll like post things throughout the day um, or throughout the week or whatever, like saying where the earth is in its orbit and like how it's affecting us and X, Y and Z. Um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of free things resources online but you can also pay to get it done and then have like a a birth chart reading if you will to get to know like yourself and how you react to you know hard stuff or just stuff in general so it's interesting for sure that yeah that's cool because when I looked it up I I didn't know you could have more than one thing so that's why I looked it up because I was confused and so I'm glad that now I understand I kind of am interested in that and you know I there's been a time in my life where I was like oh, that stuff's weird like I don't like not weird but like I don't really believe in it or whatever and then when I was teaching and now I work with kids full-time too mm-hmm. there's always been this thing that, that when there's a full moon like stuff's crazy Mm -hmm. and I never believed that until I started working with kids and it is very true so if you don't believe it out there it's a real thing oh I it hits the fan during the full moon (laughs) yes I agree yeah especially the moon and the tides and how it relates to our bodies and stuff I I mean again I don't have as much knowledge around it so I can't really like speak to it but I'm it's very fascinating that's for sure and how like Mm -hmm. we feel like the earth is on our timeline but it's so the other way around you know what I mean yeah Mm-hmm. So be nice to the earth, so. basically. <laughs> yes, please. Um, yeah, that's really interesting, though. I'm glad you looked it up. Uh, yeah. And then Ben comes up and he's like, oh, my God, you're going to be late for your meeting. And they have a little flirty flirt moment and race to their meeting. And Leslie runs into Councilman Hauser, which I think is so funny. All the time, huh? That's just his purpose, I feel, in the show as of now. Until she gets to city council, he's just the one that she says inappropriate things to accidentally. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not trying to. Right. Uh, He doesn't hold it against her later, though. Right. He has a lot of respect for her, which is cool. Yeah, they become Um, friends. Yeah, I I think this is so adorable, this little moment between, between Leslie and Ben. And I don't know how much Anne has been able to like witness them interacting because she's mm. you know I don't know if she's really there all the time when they're together and so I thought this is kind of like cute for Anne to see um totally. and she's not mad about it she's just like bye okay bye like, I think she's so I, I, I feel like both of them have those moments where they're more su- they're like more trying to be supportive but they're also like what the fuck like the book yeah. thing is Leslie's and then leaving mm-hmm. when we haven't even talked is yeah Anne's yeah that, yeah that's that's the other thing is why did Leslie schedule a time to meet with Anne when she was going to have a meeting. Yeah. Like in, in five minutes. Right. Like they haven't had barely any conversation. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's starting. Um, okay. Now I'm at where Tom is having the meeting. Um, do you have anything yes, before that? Yes. On guerrilla marketing. Yes. That's where I'm at. Yeah. On guerrilla marketing to explain that he, um, to explain this guerrilla marketing, he does some role playing, which is really hilarious. And he, I love that. I love that detail that he changes everybody's name except for Jerry's. <laughs> you yes. are going to be a boring yep. beer drinker named Jerry. <laughs> I love it. And I don't know if he does. I mean, I feel like the writers do this. The Amy did this on purpose. Mm-hmm. But it's like out of all the people in the room, you gave everyone a boring beer drinker role except for Ron. I know. That's so funny. <laughs> Who you want to say crazy the right way. Mm-hmm. Like, and you gave that to the wrong person. I know. It would have been nice if he gave it to Donna, but that was hilarious to see Ron yeah. do it. And Ron's yeah. name is Brian Thunder in this scenario, which is hilarious. Um, Andy's read when he says yeah I'm pretty uh, boring so I'll take a beer too that was Love Chris it. Pratt that was totally improvised like it was written the line was written but the way that he read it he did that and made that choice so I think that's so that, amazing so on character mm-hmm. yeah. wow that's really cool yeah he totally knew what he was doing but okay. Ron's read is so funny of the I can just picture that on the script like the way that they that Tom not the writers but that Tom mm-hmm. would have written it in the script for them that's just so funny Crazy. K Razzy. K Razzy. Oh my God. And then Tom giving him a line reading, basically. No, say it like this. And then a dope aftertaste. Oh my dope God. Aftertaste. What is it with these Greg Daniels, Mike Sure shows that have <laughs> ap- aftertaste? I know. Because all I hear is, um, oh no, Oki Afterbirth yes. is what Michael Scott says. So there's just like this running, this running joke. And it comes back later when April does the, um, 
the wine tasting thing. Oh, yeah, that's true. I didn't even so, think about that. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. guess it's just funny at all times. <laughs> it is a weird, like, afterbirth is a really weird word to use. But, like, yeah. it is kind of an interesting thing. Well, afterbirth so. is obviously not real. <laughs> not real. It's not the same. It was just Michael Scott getting thing. his words mixed up. <laughs> yeah. Which, again, beautiful writing for the character. Totally. Yeah. Ugh. So then we have this talking head where Ron says that the only things he endorse or thing, endorses rather are things that he actually believes in, which is the U.S. Army mustache trimmers, Morton Salt, and C.R. Lawrence Fine two-inch axe style scraper oscillating knife blade. So good. Woof. He apparently got this on the first try. Yes, I saw that too. First take, no mistakes. Awesome. So crazy. Well done. I did look up um, what that last one was. And Ooh. I could only find CRL is the company, but I'm guessing that stands for CR Lawrence. Um, mm-hmm. But I guess that's just shortened. But like, there's not really much about it, to be honest. Um, I like in, usually when Ron says something that he likes to endorse or that he uses or whatever, I can find like an, an instruction manual or some kind of video explaining what it is. When I looked up videos, Parks and Rec was the first thing that came up. There was like interesting nothing else, but it is real. I mean, this is a true um, product and it's a true um, what you call it uh, company website, CRL fine. Um, but basically the website says that this um, thing has extremely sharp edges to cut through the hardest of adhesives and you can fit it into different knives. So, I mean, very Ron, but also I don't know what he's using it for. I would have loved to find that out, but that's OK. That's not the point. I get it. Whatever. <laughs> There's endless possibilities as to what he was using that for. Yes. So. (laughs) Oh, Ronald. Oh, Ronald. Chris is now saying that they need to find a new PR director for the health department because Dennis Cooper was fired, who was the previous director. And this is I think this is one of my favorite Chris like talking heads. Like this is one of the times that I'm like finding him really hilarious because he Mm -hmm. posted he reads these signs that, that Dennis Cooper posted all over City Hall calling his wife Jan, who had an affair, a whore, basically. Mm -hmm. has chlamydia oh my brought to you by the Pawnee Health Department yes exactly it's like endorsed by the health department I love the last two kill me every time Jan I love you please come back (laughs) and then the last one re-elect Jan Cooper mayor of Horville (laughs) Horville I know he goes he goes and that was very strategically like and well uh organized Mm -hmm. that they did the really heartfelt one and then went back to the comedy like bashing her um yeah I just I, I loved that I did too. So much. And doesn't doesn't he say it at the end of the Jen? I love you. Please come back. Brought to you by the Pony Help. Oh yeah, and he does. <laughs> and he has like a sad face. Yes, totally. Yeah. He's oh. trying to empathize with Dennis. Poor little Dennis. Um, yeah. Apparently, they wanted Dennis Harper to be this name, but there was a Jan Harper somewhere in the world, so they had to pick another name, which was interesting. So all these names have to be cleared. You can't have names that are like. A bunch of you. Can, it's either one or the other. So you can have um, a name that everybody has, like a Dennis Cooper, which is why they picked right. that because there's no way they could trace it back to another one that they like stole it from, or right. a random ass one like Ron Swanson that <laughs> is nowhere. Right. Isn't that that's wild? interesting? I would ne- yeah, I would never think that you ha- you would have to get that cleared. Yeah. Are they like trying to cover their asses for like defamation or something? I think so. Yeah, especially with the. Um, with like being a whore and all that stuff and chlamydia. chlamydia yeah. And, yeah. That's fair. So, okay. Probably. That's interesting. I know. Did not know that. I would never have thought about that. Mm-mm. But so Chris says she wants Leslie to help find this new director because Parks and the PR department of the health department, like all that stuff, they work together on health initiatives and all that stuff. And Leslie says that Anne should do it. And just really quickly, I wanted to tell you about a deleted scene. Um, Chris did the... Um, that cupping therapy you've heard of this right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so it's they Chinese have medicine right they have a whole um episode uh, or not episode deleted scene rather where they show his back and it's all bruised and in red circles like you know what happens after um but i thought it was really cool um because that was just kind of a side note which is still interesting but the thing that i thought was cool that in this deleted scene leslie is saying Anne should do it like unless that's weird for you and so there is this moment mm. like later on when you know they say i talk or when she drunkenly is like i talked to chris about it, it's fine um so it's kind of nice to see that moment play out um and chris says like no she'd be a great candidate i think that we should do this and then what was really interesting about this deleted scene was that um 
Chris says, well, we're not dating anymore because Leslie said, see, it's okay. Like, you can date each other in the department and it was not a big deal. And Chris is like, well, to be clear, we're not dating anymore. But if we were, it would be an issue. So I love that subtle nod to the dating and the part where, you know, Mm -hmm. Leslie says um, to Anne, like, I talked to Chris about it. So there's a lot of, like, really subtle things happening. And you can see Leslie still grasping at straws or really wanting to be with Ben. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, totally. She's looking for that loophole. But it, it is nice because I feel like we get lost in this episode of, of Leslie being a steamroller. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like we get lost in this. She didn't think about anything. And she did ask. She did. She does make that comment to Chris. Mm-hmm. Like, would that be weird for you? Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. Because I'm getting strong Chris from Jerry's painting vibes from Leslie here. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, where Chris is just like going and unintentionally steamrolling and and putting plans on someone else like mm-hmm. that's where I'm I'm seeing Leslie here. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Anne. Yeah, because like um, it's like it's such a double edged sword. I feel because it's nice that she talked to Chris, but it's also like when Anne says like, "Wait, you talked to him before you talked to me?" Like that's weird. Mm-hmm. So well, and and I don't want to jump ahead. So if we're we not ready ahead, to go fine. to the um to the hospital, but she says I submitted your name, right. which I'm not I'm not so upset about that necessarily I think you can put her name down and she can retract it if she wants to Mm -hmm. but she didn't even ask Anne if this is something she was interested in I think she took the little seedling of Anne earlier saying I'm sick of the hospital and being like "Ooh, I have a fix for her yeah um and I she's coming from good intentions right Mm -hmm. she wants her friend to be out of the hospital where she's feeling stressed out she wants to work closer to her friend but she immediately is this is when your interview is. You're going to go to the interview. You're going to do all this research. And she's like not letting Anne speak her her thoughts or feelings about yeah, it. Yeah. I thought it was so funny that the interview's at 9 a.m., which I was <laughs> like, what? Uh, that I would have hoped for at least like, I a don't know, two. 1 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After like a day true. has passed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you prepare? And the, the other thing is, too, and I say this later because... Um, because, you know, she says, aren't you supposed to be studying? Like, I don't know about anybody else, but the only studying I've ever done for an interview was like a just like a quick read through of like the about page for the company mm-hmm. so that I know where, you know, I know what their mission statement is. Does it in line align with what I'm mm-hmm. I stand for? But like, I'm not sitting there like reading files from 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, that's also because you don't have access to them. <laughs> but Leslie That's gave true. her access. <laughs> Although I'm not saying that that was something that she should have done because it was insane. Right. Um, yeah. But that's really funny. Yeah. Um, so she I gave do, her way I too feel, much. Oh, yeah. I feel Anne being overwhelmed here. Mm-hmm. 100%. Because she's still I working love... at the hospital right now. Right. Like, exactly. She's still in a shift. <laughs> yeah, totally. And the book that she gives Anne, in addition, in addition to the homework and the chocolate covered espresso beans, which is which is hilarious, because this is how I am with with my book club. Like I've literally sent videos of myself like freaking out after I figured out like a story or a plot line or something has ended. I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh my god, we have to talk about this. Um, and side note, this book is called Freedom by Jonathan Franzen, and apparently Amy Poehler was reading this at the time of filming, so she had like just Very finished cool. it. So I guess she just put that in, but also it was like a really big deal apparently. Um, and she also said that she has since met Jonathan Franson. So that's kind of oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But it was that's like this awesome. really big deal. So I'll have to add it to my book or to my like book list. But apparently it was in 2010 and it got a bunch of like critical acclaim and was a big deal. So that's kind of nice. Wow. I um, I read this somewhere and it was a huge speculation. Mm. Um, but they say in the book, I won't give a lot away, but they say in the book, Patty has a run in with an ex boyfriend oh yeah i read that too while she's while she's sorry hit my mic (laughs) no you're good she has a run-in with her ex-boyfriend um when she's married Mm -hmm. and they were trying to make some sort of analytical correlation where it's like this is how leslie feels like she's married to her job but she's like cheating on her job with ben yeah so i was like this is kind of a stretch but like okay yeah they were just trying to compare each character to what the characters were in the book yeah Right. Whereas I'm in my head, Leslie just likes to read and we all like to have somebody to talk to about yeah. the books. This is why Connor and I read Harry Potter like at the same time. Right. <laughs> so yeah. that we had somebody to talk to about it. They they mentioned it on the commentary, too, that this was like kind. I think I can't remember exactly what they said, but I feel like they did say that they sort of related Leslie to Patty. But I don't know if 
yeah, I, I feel like it was just kind of a an out there thing. That wasn't the only reason that they brought it up. The main reason I think was because Leslie was reading it and it was a big deal. Or Amy Poehler was yeah. reading it. And it was a Amy, big deal. yeah, yeah, um, very cool. I do love that when Anne says, "Okay, take a deep breath," and she takes this like really short, shallow breath. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> and exhale. <laughs> it's I, yeah, it's so well acted, and I think it shows you Leslie doesn't have, has no chill. Yeah, totally. Oh my god. So it's like, does she ever sit and like just take deep breaths? Mm-hmm. Doesn't look like it because that doesn't look like a healthy deep breath. To I me. know, right? Oh my god. Uh, but then, I do love it. The way it's acted is so wonderful and hilarious. I know both of them playing off each other is so good. Um, yeah. Anne says she's been a nurse for over 10 years, and it's not something that you just quit. Um, And the way, obviously, the way Leslie frames this, what we were talking about, is all wrong, like, as far as, like, kind of being selfish, not not because of the interview necessarily to me personally, but also because she says you could make real change. And I was like, but Mm -hmm. Anne is kind of already making real change. But from Leslie's point of view, it could be in a way that is not, like, um, unhealthy for Anne. Um, right. So and and right now is just feeling exhausted and run down. So she's like, you should be doing something else, which like I can relate to. And you know that I do that all the time. So I definitely am like feeling where Leslie is, you know, trying to make sense of this. But I know that it's not like right in this instance. <laughs> yeah, no, I I got strong Holly vibes from this Mm -hmm. and not in the unhealthy like steamroller way at all it It was more just own up to that and that's fine (laughs) (laughs) but I think with (laughs) I think with me and my job though you've never steamrolled over me I think it's you've always come from that like because I'm putting myself as Anne here Mm -hmm. like you've seen shit I've had to go through in my job Mm -hmm. and you've had these moments where you're like how do we get Maddie out of this how Mm -hmm. do we get Maddie in a safer place like this I wrote it specifically about this line when she's like you like you don't have to be pulling strange things out of people's butts all the time (laughs) and she's like that's only happened once and you're and she's like that's one too many times and I feel like that's you when I'm like (laughs) oh yeah a kid kid had a gun and you're like that's too many one time is too many times like so I felt, yeah, I felt really hard, like Holly vibes from it's all true. Of this. I feel like if yeah. I had a job to offer you like Leslie does here, I would. I would do yeah. this probably. Maybe not in the way that yeah, Leslie I can does see it, that. but I would definitely be like, so have you applied for that or have you looked at it? Like, what's the deal? So yeah. no, I think I think you would do it in the the. I wouldn't give you binders, right, unfortunately, unless I like knew. <laughs> but you wouldn't make me study for my job interview, probably. But you would definitely be on me about are you making change? Because you do that. You check in. You're like, OK, but have you made change? Have you talked to your boss? Yeah. OK, that's your goal this week. You're talking to your boss. So, <laughs> you know, like, but it's good because I can relate to Anne also that you have found something that you feel like you're good at. And mm-hmm. we've talked about this. You find something you feel like you're good at. Yeah. You feel like you're making change. But you also and it's easier to rely on that positive than to remember how it's negatively mm-hmm. affecting you. That's really So weird. having having you, her having Leslie yeah. is really grounding. Yeah. Because you can realize that not everybody's job is as stressful as that. Yeah. Yeah, well, and so. like as the audience when I was watching it, I was uh, that's what I was feeling at first like, oh, but she is making a difference, but then when mm-hmm. they actually show the example that she means of that yeah. old nurse and the the, the guy or uh, the patient, I was like, oh, that's what she means. Where like you will maybe if you're on this track that you're going right now like with your exhaustion continuing and x y and z like that could be you (laughs) so (laughs) oh 100 percent. and I feel like I feel like we've had this conversation before but I feel like this job has changed me in good ways where I'm more assertive Mm -hmm. and I'm much more willing to like fight for myself Mm -hmm. but there there are ways where I feel like I'm a more I'm more negative yeah well you become jaded in any job Mm -hmm. so especially if as a nurse or someone in the medical field when like there's so much roadblocks or like working for the government even like you just become jaded and I um and then I think that is where Anne tiny bit I mean you can see it in her eyes anyway she doesn't necessarily say it but she does kind of start to see the positive sides of applying where I guess she kind of says that thing of like it would be nice to like have an office yeah you know yeah um I oh go ahead I just I want to go back to the ten years thing because I don't know if you saw this or if it's true. I need to go back and watch. Oh yeah, like the Andy season thing. One. Yeah, explain. Yeah, so um, in season one, apparently I need to go back and find it because mm-hmm. I didn't do my. Yeah, I didn't do that like, either. Go back. So 
but th- there was there were three articles that I saw it in. So the first one, I was like, I don't believe that. And then I saw two more. So I was like, okay, maybe. That apparently Andy and Anne, they say in the first season that they've been to get, they met in college mm-hmm. and they've been together for two or three years. Mm-hmm. And then now we're seeing Anne say that she's been a nurse for over 10 years. So my thought is that she and Andy were friends mm. for a while and didn't date right out of college because also if they met in college, she also had to go to nursing school after. Right, right. right. Or is, is nursing school part of no, I think, college? Uh, oh, it could be. I do think you can I go think some programs do it that nurse. way now. Yeah. 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 So also Andy went to college. Oh, right. I was thinking <laughs> that too when I read that article. That's why I was like, uh, should I bring this yeah. up? <laughs> I know. I'm, I don't want to wait. I don't want to like way too heavily on it because no but i think it is I, how important is it but it is there it's though. interesting yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's just funny. a just a tidbit for people to think about yeah but they didn't mention it it's... um like on the podcast or the commentary um mm. so that's interesting to me but yeah yeah so i think Anyways. very possible they could have just been friends for a while too yeah between between college and dating i could see that yeah yeah well it was worth it to bring up i feel <laughs> um all right, so let's see. Oh, I looked up this nurse and the patient. I couldn't find them listed on IMDb, which is sad. However, like I was talking about before, Amy Poehler knew the nurse's name. She mentioned her name is Jean Iavelli, but I didn't. For some reason, I didn't see her listed on IMDb for this episode. And to be fair, most of the time, um, you have to submit your own IMDb listings, but sometimes the mm-hmm production does it so maybe that just was an instance where like she wasn't looking and making sure um i didn't see the patient either but i really liked both of them they're really funny amy poehler really liked that nurse and how she like delivered her line of like oh shut up (laughs) it's so well delivered it really is Uh, okay that's good well now i'm at the april and andy uh shoeshine stand moment if you are yes this okay. cute little moment. It's very precious. They're talking about the snake hole, and April says she doesn't want to do it, and she's, like, really grouchy. But Andy says, like you said, he can't st- um, be on the Dunzo list. And it was really funny on the commentary. Amy, I don't think it... I don't think it was a joke. The way that she said it seemed like it was real, but Amy Poehler said that Aubrey Plaza was actually in kind of a bad mood that day, so it helped the scene. <laughs> I love it. I know. I can... Eh, that's fair. Yeah. I get it. And I love that they're they're willing to compromise, right? That's why this relationship works, because April loves Andy enough to do the things that he wants to do, but he loves her enough mm-hmm. to make it enjoyable for her. And we see this throughout the series. Yeah, they're both so, really making each other happy, I feel, which is nice. And because Andy, I mean, I, I feel like Andy is, um, to a sense, like somewhat emotionally smart, where he talks about like the role playing and he knows that April will really like that. So mm-hmm. I think that was really cool for him to come up with that out of the box idea. Yeah, I think we're getting to see more. I think they're forming in his character more and more heart mm-hmm. because he's got that I'm not all there mentally mm-hmm. vibe. Um, because we see later he really tries to be there for Ben too. Yeah, exactly. So, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. But. I love April says um, next or one of them says, I think it's April. Next time you see me, I'll be a stranger. Yeah. I'm like, don't you guys live together? <laughs> oh, that's Are true. You're like planning it so you don't. You yeah. Know, you don't at see the same each other time to the... change or whatever. That's which funny. is cute. Like, I'm all about that. But it was just funny to me. Yeah, that is funny. Well, finally, we're at the snake hole, and there's a nice little juicy shot of snake juice in the bottle and people taking shots. Um, Freddy, our bartender fella, comes back because he's a bar owner, and I guess he's not a bartender. He's a bar owner, but Mm -hmm. um, he does. I love how they dress him every single time of like a button down and a gold necklace. I just think it's so funny, like a button down striped shirt, like very bar owner-y mafia type vibes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely the vibe with the chain. Yeah, and, uh, and like, they're like always, oh, go ahead. They're like silky looking too. Yeah, huh? totally. Like yeah. trying to be expensive looking, but might not quite hit the mark. <laughs> On a $10 budget. <laughs> right? yeah. And I just think it's funny too with the way he acts it as well and the lines that they give him of him being kind of like, I don't know, uh, borderline rude and borderline like scary where he's like, this better work because I'm not taking a loss on this. And then Tom's mm-hmm. like, uh... Then nothing this delicious will fail. Which boy was he right? At least not in the yeah. buying part, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I love Leslie. She just comes straight in. She's like, 
These are the words he said I to love use. That. Like just storms and what <laughs> high end, and you're like, oh, you're so you're so good. I know she's so supportive. <laughs> VIP quality experience. It's so funny. <laughs> and uh, then she immediately she says, like lifestyle her or something when she gets too. to him. <laughs> love it. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's so good. Did you notice that Hot in Here by Nelly is playing? I was not paying attention I to the music. I loved it wow. so much. That's great. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Because then she turns and she sees Anne. So, yes, I yeah. did. Yeah. Because I know that song from her turning and seeing Anne yeah. with the douche. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's like a memory that but, came back. Yes. It's just so funny. Um, yeah. And then the we've got John Raphael. I ever, oh, yeah. The first time I ever heard the song, I'm so sorry. This is no, like please. a tangent. But the first time I've ever heard that song was in the Agent Cody Banks movie. Oh, I don't I remember, remember that his. Movie. Yeah, so his that was like handler. a Disney thing, right? Or no? Ooh, what is that? I, it wasn't released like on Disney Channel. I think it was a movie theater movie. Okay, um, but it Frankie Muniz is okay. Yeah, Agent so it's Cody geared Banks. toward kids. Okay, yeah, but he his uh, which is funny because his handler is like you would recognize her if you saw her, mm. but she's super attractive, and so they play that when she's getting out of like a helicopter. or something. Oh my god! But that's. That's the memory that comes back is that movie. From that, that is song. so funny. So, yeah, dude, weird, that um, that uh, song was huge. <laughs> it yeah. was everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, yes. Yeah. But John, Ralph- John Ralphio, like you said, I, I did read and I feel like we should have known this from Amy Poehler writing it. But I read that she wrote all of his little raps. That unfortunately is not the case. That is okay. one of the, and I hate to say that to you because I love that I read that too. That was one of the articles that okay. was wrong, unfortunately, and it really is sad. Um, however, no, but I'm glad that we're finding that out. Like, I would rather give credit to the person who did it because yeah. Amy, we know Amy's still amazing. Like, right. just because she didn't write these doesn't mean anything. But totally. Well, that know. was one of the articles that half the stuff was wrong. I was like, mm. Mm. I should have said that at the beginning. But um, no, Mike Sure wrote those. Nice. Amy okay. Poehler was on the commentary saying, like, wait, was this Harris Whittles who wrote this? Like, and maybe he helped a little bit, but Mike Schur was like, no, I, um, I, I think I did those because <laughs> it had been a while. Um, yeah. but I don't, I feel like it'd be one thing if Amy Poehler was trying to like pawn it off and say, like, oh, you wrote those when like maybe she did, but she was mm-hmm. legitimately asking, like, who wrote those who wrote again? That? <laughs> yeah. So maybe she had so some good, say though. in it. I don't know. But Mike Sure was like the main one that did it. Yeah. No, there. I mean, you, you don't think about how hard it is to rhyme stuff. And then on top of it, you have to rhyme it and then have it also not end on the rhyme. Right. Oh, my God. That was so funny. I feel like the one that actually like like illustrates what he's talking about is the last one, though, because everyone else everywhere else he could have taken off the last word. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for a successful like yeah. success. Full. <laughs> yeah everything else you're right you could have and you could have not done indiana you could have not done clock yeah so yeah, yeah yeah totally it's so funny though um and mike sure actually commented saying on the commentary that john ralphio slash ben schwartz is like a wind-up toy and i was like oh my god that is a perfect metaphor for him that really is. It was oh like they just wind him up and he goes with the comedy and he's like bopping all around set. I just I love that. That's his whole vibe. Ben Schwartz. Yes. He's just got good energy. And yeah, he's funny. I really like him. I really like that somebody found him for this and they were like, we have to bring John Ralphio back because he he's so funny. I love that they foster talent like that. Me too. Me too. For sure. So. He's so good. And Oh my god, it's so iconic in the show. Um yes. I love that they did the him and um I don't know how much they practiced it, but him and Aziz do the get that paper thing. I mean, they're so on point with each other. Oh yeah. They're they're in so sync. So in sync. Yeah, um very, very much so. I love his line too. It's off the church. Oh my god. That shiz is straight up delicious. It's so I want to use that. <laughs> delicious. I love when Leslie is like, well said. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so sarcastic. <laughs> oh. And She's then great. apparently, um, okay, so you know the the line when Leslie's like, I can't stay for very long. I have to go help her, uh, help Anne cram. And he's like, well, I, she might be up all night, but I think someone else is going to be doing the cramming. Sleazy Tom. Sleazy Tom. But apparently there was a debate in the writer's room. Like, can we do that? Isn't that like so dirty? That's too dirty, probably. But then I was like, but they did that penis line with Brandy Max. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. And 
I feel like if you're a certain age, you don't catch the. It's not straight up. Yeah, I feel in like your it's face. Just, yeah, yeah, it's just slang, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. but then we see Anne is dancing with the douche, which is why Tom says that. And I love these, like this next little like couplet thing of like Leslie's like, "I'm seeing you here," because Anne says, mm-hmm. "I'm so happy to see you," instead of saying, and- "I'm happy to see you too," kind of thing. Yeah, and I. Anne looks genuinely happy to see Leslie. Yeah, she does. Like, she wants to hang out with her friend. Yeah. And I don't... And then Leslie does the whole, I'm not angry, but I'm actually angry. Yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, so. which, I mean, I feel like there's so many, like, conversations and arguments like that where the other person just really doesn't know or have any idea that yeah. there's anything going on. Um, but there is a lot of tension, and this is the first time that we're seeing the serious tension where... Anne is saying, like, in that laughy kind of smile. They're both doing that, where they're laughing, kind of smiling, but there also is this tense, like, air and energy where she's like, well, that was a ridiculous amount of things that you gave me. Like, there's no way I could get through all of that. Like, that's so ridiculous. Which is kind of insulting to Leslie, I feel, because Leslie's like... Yeah, you can. I think you can see Anne starting to get a little irked. Mm -hmm. So she's not trying to blatantly be a bitch, but she is, like, not really thinking through how Leslie's going to take what she's saying. Yeah. And then Leslie's getting more irked because she's like, well, you're not taking this seriously. Right. Um, Again, they're both trying to like avoid the actual confrontation of it. They're just trying to be like nice to each other where Leslie's like, you know, but you're going in for the interview. Right. And Anne's like, I think so. And that makes Leslie even more like, wait, what? (laughs) You know? Yeah. Yeah. It all. Yeah. And it's like, like I told you, uh, I said earlier, like. It's I can see where they're both coming from, Mm -hmm. but I can also see where they're both kind of making the other person uncomfortable and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, not helping the situation. And I feel like you learn in friendship and I I don't think we've really seen them fight before. Mm -mm, No, this was that that was the whole premise of the episode that they said in the writer's room that they were trying to figure out a like a a sincere, if that makes sense, or like an actual Mm -hmm. reason why they would fight. Um, like not just about boys, not just about whatever, you know what I mean? Like, even though some of it was about that. Um, but yeah, so this was, that was really the, the first time that they've seen them actually have a disagreement. Well, and I like that too, because it's, it's genuine and it's real. Like being friends with someone for a really long time and being close with them, you're going to have times when you don't agree Mm -hmm. and it's okay. Mm -hmm. But like, how do you handle it? And Mm -hmm. I think we've learned being adults, like it's much better as shitty as it might be. Sometimes it's much better to just come out and say how you're feeling Mm -hmm. like, and be honest with the other person because you'd rather not just be sitting there being like, well, they think it's fine. So I'm just going to keep doing this, you know? So I think they need to get it out. I think it's a really healthy, not healthy that they're drunk when they do it. Right. But I think when the can of worms does open, I'm like, this is what you guys needed to do this morning. Right. um, Yeah, totally. To get it out. Well, that's why. Oh, go ahead. And I was just going to say, because then Leslie starts pulling other stuff out that's not even on this topic, oh, right? Totally. She goes back to the, you're going through too many boyfriends and I'm never going to get that book back, Well, which Anne kind of starts, but mm-hmm. you know, so it's like this tug and pull of like, now you're bringing yeah. everything else out. Absolutely. And that's why, I, yeah, that's why they said that that was one of the more, um, or this is one of the most, like Mike Sherwood, I think was saying like, this is the, one of the most um, realistic fights between women that he's ever seen on like portrayed on TV and I think that's why because it is slow burn Mm -hmm. number one but number two is like yeah you do start to kind of pull out other things that have been on your mind that you it's not that they're not true it's that you haven't said it yet so now they're coming out Mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah and they might not have necessarily bothered you that much at the time yeah but now that you're already in the explosion yeah it's like, here's everything else I'm mad about. Too. Right. Yeah. And the thing about it for me anyway, it's just like that stuff did bother me at the time, but I just mm. didn't say it because I felt like that wasn't worth bringing up. But now that we're here, mm. might as well. That's what it is. Yeah. Not necessarily that it didn't bother you, but right. it, that it wasn't big enough to start something right. about. Yeah. <sighs> it's hard. So, yeah. <laughs> so but now it's, Nick but Kroll, it's good. Yeah, exactly. Now Nick Kroll is here, a.k.a. the douche. Um, that line, is there enough room for some mayonnaise in this lady sandwich? So gross. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's nasty. Howard it's Tuttleman nasty. is his real name, which is so funny to me. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I had no idea. Right. I don't think we've heard that before, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, and it's really funny. Also, they said that they really wrote 
uh, the douche and crazy Iris specifically for Nick Kroll and Matt Besser who play those characters like there wasn't really much of an audition moment it was like they wrote that with them in mind Mm, Um, and this episode as you can tell was like 8,000% um, improvised like so much of it was improvised and so they said that they did have to cut quite a bit of it but they said that Nick Kroll did improvise quite a bit which was really interesting that's cool so and Nick Kroll and Amy Poehler ended up dating Mm -hmm. later in the series too yeah yeah um the I love that the douche is like introducing himself as if Leslie doesn't know him and she's like um I was on your show once like what are you talking about um and then I was like I'm really glad because um when Leslie and Anne had that talk at City Hall on the bench, like their lightning round moment, Anne said she was dating another dude named Matthias, the triple Pisces guy. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I guess she's not exclusive with anyone, so that's fine, I suppose. But then there was this deleted scene when Leslie a- actually asks, like, again, proving that I am Leslie. Leslie's like, wait, what happened to Matthias? And Anne literally says, who? Again. So she doesn't remember the guy she was talking about. Yikes. And Leslie was like explaining the guy that you were telling me about and Anne was like oh that guy um and her reasoning it's so funny that the all the reasons they come up with apparently the reason was Anne said she saw a picture of him with cutoffs I guess cutoff jeans and she was like and she makes a face <laughs> and so she's just like no and then oh this gosh. is where in the deleted scene and obviously we talk about this later and it comes up um in the not deleted scenes but Leslie says oh wow you blink and you miss another guy and Anne is like kind of laughing it off. It was such an awesome scene. I would have watched all of the deleted scenes in this one were deleted scenes similar to The Office where like they could have been, which I guess Parks does that too, but where they mm-hmm. could have totally been in the episode. It was just way too long for, for time. I hope they do that one day like Ugh. they've done at The Office. I they really do a bunch do. of producers cuts now on Peacock, but it's not all mm. of them, which is, what are you going to do? Yeah. I I just, that... <laughs> That's such a ballsy line yeah. to Anne. But also, like, I kind of get it. I know. This is because we talk about this all the time that I'm Anne, you're Leslie. But this is a part of Anne that, like, I don't I, I don't think I could have ever been on board mm. for is like, sure, dating free, like freely and like trying out different guys. Sure. But like so often that you're you don't remember the guy and <laughs> that like, you're, you're yeah <laughs> and that you're like i'm not gonna be with this guy anymore because he wore cut off jeans once that's so like, funny not that that's a cute look but like <laughs> <laughs> seems like such a small thing to end things over. i know that's the thing like yeah she's really just like she's talking about like wearing different hats and not giving a shit about who she's going out with especially mm-hmm. and i'm skipping ahead but i feel like since we're talking about it it would make sense but like when she talks about um, how they met, how the douche and her met, and he has that line, that awful, stupid line of "If you're looking for douches, they're in aisle me." That's Anne mm. is an Anne intelligent, beautiful woman. Why did she do that? <laughs> Why did she yeah. like? So I feel like she's just in this space right now where she's just like, "Okay, well, you're you seem cute, whatever." You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Where I feel like yep. season two, Anne would have been like, "What the fuck?" Because that seems like such a Tom line. Yes, and yet she season fell for two, it? Anne. And season four, Anne, would never go for that. Season three, Anne, is a hot fucking mess. Yeah, she's in her arc right now, so yes. we can't blame her. And we her. love her, but like... Yeah, and any women going through what Anne is going through right now, like, we wish you well on your journey. It's just tough yes. to watch sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yeah. So maybe don't loan those one-minute people your best friend's books. Yeah! That's the real lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. All right, so now we're seeing mm. Janet Snakehole and Burt Macklin come to life for the first time. Well, Janet Snakehole, anyway. I think we've seen Burt Macklin or talked about him quite a bit. But I love this line of Janet's a very rich widow with a terrible secret. I love that. Yes. I love that they didn't do anything themed or we have to be people from the same universe. I oh, love yeah. that they just celebrate that they are different people and that it is okay that these people are going to find each other because they found each other. I just... I don't know why it came to me when I was watching it for the last time, but I was like, they didn't like, cause some people will be like, okay, we're going to be like this person and this person mm-hmm. and we're going to accidentally run into each other here. And they're just like, fuck it. Whoever we turn up as that's who we are. And I just love that they celebrate each other. Yeah, like I know. It's so cute. And it's also really, it made me kind of think of, um, in modern family when what's his ass, uh, Oh my God. I always forget their name. Phil, Phil, Phil. um, is Claude. No, Klaus. 
shoot one of those yeah that's one of those close. like when they meet at the hotels they don't yeah. again they don't have as much uh detail as janet snake and burt macklin but it's still really interesting right. where they're like just meeting at a random bar um mm-hmm. I love here too. I, I didn't really. I mean, obviously, Andy's making it up as he goes. But I, this is the first time we hear that Bert was the best damn agent they ever had until he was framed for a crime he didn't commit: didn't stealing commit. the president's rubies. <laughs> and again, like you Gosh, said, they stay it. true to each other. Where Andy breaks character and he says, "I kind of thought your costume would be sluttier," and that's totally such an April move to like slap him and then leave. And Andy loving it, you know what I mean? And and good for you, April. Like totally. No, my no, no, my outfit did not have to be sexy and slutty. Yours for you. wasn't sexy or slutty. Yeah. <laughs> so I, when she slapped him, I was like, yes, yeah. And that he like respected it and was like, you know, yeah, totally and liked it. Yeah, like, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Well, then. Um, it was funny because on the commentary, Amy said that Aubrey Plaza used to do this like Janet Snakehole voice. You know how she puts on kind of like a 1920s mm-hmm. type of vibe. Um, but she would do this voice. I don't know if it was just like around set or Amy said like she thought it was funny. Um, she might have seen. I think she mentioned seeing it in a video one time that Aubrey Plaza did or something like that. Mm-hmm. But Amy thought it was really funny. So that's how that came about. Very cool. Yeah. I like it. Um, well, now I'm at Ron talking to Tom and uh, John Ralphio, if you are. Yes, and I love this. How you live in yes. yes. <laughs> I love the I love Ron, yes come being here for a bit. Come here, come here, come here, come over yeah. here. You're good right there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the Ron and John Ralphio moments throughout the series it's are so, so good. good. It's so interesting yeah. to be reminded of that. John Ralphio, like the way that we originally met with him was because Tom was trying to get Ron an interview or get him an interview to be Ron's assistant. And then April ended up being the assistant. But then they brought John Ralphio back, which was so interesting because none of the other assistants came back. But it was great. Yeah. No, I think. And we talked about that in the first episode, too, where. Yeah. How can you not? And in that first episode, we mentioned like John Ralphio, like already immediately there was no working up to it. He just is that character immediately. Yeah. So it's great. Love that. Um, then Tom has all of his ideas because John Ralphie was like, this dude has so many like amazing business ideas. You should really love snake juice. And my favorite idea, I'm not going to list them all because they were insane, but I love it so much. Mm-hmm. My favorite idea right now, I have two. One is the water bottle called H2Ho. I would probably be interested <laughs> in that. <laughs> I would totally. I love, I, I love when they put when people put ho in anything. Like Lizzo has that song. I can't remember which one it is, but she says I'm the CEO ho. And I'm like, oh, that is so brilliant. I love that. That's really clever. My email at work is Madison Ho oh because God, there was already a Madison H. <laughs> That's so hilarious. They had to give me the O. We got to figure out a way to make it a pun. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and the the eclipse bar is really funny too. Um, I thought that was funny. That- that's the one, if I'm being honest, is the one that I thought would be make the most money. Totally. It's and so exclusive. And you know all the celebrities that and like Kardashians would be so up all in that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's so it's crazy. We've been doing a lot of research around like markets and what makes money and, and stuff like that. And I've been like, oh, my gosh, people spend money on the stupidest shit, especially if they have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so I I can see his eclipse bar like the other ones. I was like, OK, they might be cool for like a little bit, but they're not going to sustain. And I don't think he has the intellectual ability to be able to figure out how to make text messages come up on <laughs> contacts. That although be, I think that's a great idea. That would be scary to me. That's like what if oh, that happens yeah. when you're driving. That's true. I can yeah. see. Wait, I what is that? Oh, my God. Glasses, what is that movie? Though. Yeah, what is that movie with the glasses where the thing comes? There's like a little. Is that just in Ned's Declassified? <laughs> <laughs> there's like a little tiny square screen yeah, in front of his glasses. It's a cook. Is his name Cookie? Oh God, Why I is forgot. that thing? I don't know, but yeah, he he has that on his glasses. No, but I know what you're talking about. There's like a spy movie or something where everything comes up on the glasses. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I just a common think thing about it. But yeah. contacts, but, woof. Yeah, maybe not contacts. But I guess if it came thing. up in one eye, maybe, and like your other good eye was free to see, but still, it's so weird. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think the Eclipse one is the only idea that would get traction and make him a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I love at this point, Tom's like basically drunk and he's like, I can keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's starting to get, yes. get a little drunk. They're feeling it. Um, yeah. Ron says he's more of a whiskey drinker. But then Tom comes up with an idea that he's going to shave off all of John Ralphio's hair if Ron doesn't like snake juice. 
And John Ralphio's hair is what makes John Ralphio. I know. It's so funny to me also. I couldn't quite tell again. I can never tell if they're like joking or serious or what, but I'm pretty positive. They really commented on the the funny line of um, John Ralphio saying, there's a lot riding on this. Mm-hmm. I think, I feel like, what's his name? Ben Schwartz might have done that, like improvised that. Interpro- improvised. I don't know for sure, but even if it was written, which brilliant, it, whatever, but he performed that line so well, I feel like. Oh yeah! Really scared. Oh, it's so well delivered. Yeah, yeah. Because usually he's very loud and mm-hmm. big. Yeah, and he's very reserved and high pitched. Yes. Here. Oh my so. gosh! And Ron saying, "Damn, if that isn't delicious!" I love it so mm-hmm. much. <laughs> I would have loved to hear Ron say "delicious." Yeah. Uh, and I also love uh, "delicious." I also love that line of John Ralphio saying, um, "Like after he rhymes, I think because he makes a rhyme for Ron's name, right?" Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the boss. Right. And, or no, wait, the boss one is for Chris, right? And Ron is for, oh, um, R-O-N Big Ben Clock. Yeah. And um, Tom says it's really, I, I just think it's really funny when Tom says, you got to end it on the rhyme. And John Ralph feels like, I know, I know what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, then fix it, bro. So I don't. Good. <laughs> and then uh, now I'm at where Janet Snakehole is talking to random people, clearly drunk mm-hmm. already. Oh, yeah. She's definitely sounding drunk. Doing a great job. Mm-hmm. And then this um, is where the the douche thing happens, where the douche talks about uh, how they met at the supermarket. And then, like you said, um, Anne kind of brings up the book thing again. And mm-hmm. then this is where it gets like a little bit more nail bitey when Leslie's like, I should have known better than to loan something to one of your boyfriends. They come and go so fast. Mm-hmm. Yikes. And there's no regard or care that. Howard Tuttleman is sitting right there. Oh, yeah. She's like, he's dumb, but he's fun. <laughs> Thank you, know, you. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah, that, that is when he says, thank you, huh? How long is There's another time he says right here. <laughs> yeah. I love that he's laughing uh, at all of Leslie's insults. I have to say, I feel like if it was me to, I don't know, I guess at this point, I feel like both of us might not care that the douche is there. If we were in Leslie's fair. shoes, we would just say what we're feeling at that point. Honestly, especially with alcohol involved. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, yeah. And speaking of that, the alcohol, I feel like, makes them both a little bit... They're not quite there yet, but they are I think they're probably feeling it a little. And that whole thing of... Even if they weren't drunk, though, that whole thing of, like, are you mad? or No, wait. I, I mean, you seem mad at me. No, I'm not mad. Mm-hmm. That is painful, because it's so accurate. It's so accurate. And I hate to say that, like, that I've been in positions like that. And I will be honest that I typically always err on the side of... It's not right that I do this, but I am. I always am like, this person's upset with me. Mm. Always, it does. If there's not a smiley face or an exclamation point, and there, if there's, if and that's why I hate text. Like I hate texting. That's why I like us doing our voice memos. Yeah, <laughs> because I can hear your inflections and everything. Because I don't know why, but my immediate guess is if there's not emojis if there's not it's that you're upset it's such a human I, nature thing it yeah and it's with everyone it's not just you it's it's like you know my mom or mm-hmm. even my mom who yeah. i know like you, like you know <laughs> but my brother yeah it's everybody if there's not like a haha or a you know i just really read into it so i feel like this is the real life version of that mm-hmm. that they're not being totally transparent with with everything because leslie seems very upset but she's saying she's not. Right, 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 right. And they're both trying to like get each other to say how they really feel because they can't do it <laughs> themselves. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. interesting. For Back to the text messaging thing. I definitely um, have been, uh, what you call it, um, trying really hard not to be as emoji slash smiling heavy. And I think that comes mm. from... Um, uh, work honestly like in emails and stuff mm. I would like put a smiley face and I'd be like what the fuck like just to make it like especially when I was like making a request or saying something professional or whatever mm-hmm. and like a lot of the times like a smiley face is not bad and I use ex- oh my gosh I use exclamation points like way more than any person probably should uh, especially in emails but I yeah I just started to kind of think to myself like do they need a smiley face? Like, do they need mm. me to like soften the blow or can I just be a professional like working employee? And so yeah. because I was like, everything I'm saying does not warrant a smiley face. You know what I mean? And like, mm-hmm. yeah, that is who I am technically. But like, I'm just telling you how I 
how I need you or how I'm like uh, feeling, I guess, or like what I need from you. And that doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that I'm being mean. That doesn't mean that I am like having any sort of like response or emotion or whatever. I just need you to know what you need to do. The end. You know what I mean? So I've been trying really hard to be better about that um, and not like fake it as much. So um, I still love an emoji or a bitmoji, but like I don't use them as much. I can I can definitely say that. Mm. Yeah. Which is wild. That's fair. So anyways, um, they were now they're like doing that whole thing of like fighting and not fighting. And um, Mike sure says that. Well, that in the commentary, they were talking about this and they said that if this was truly realistic, it would have lasted for like 11 months. I was like, oh, my God, that is real. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had like a fight last 11 months yeah like I feel like it can maybe six months maybe four but like I I am always in the okay we we hashed it out we said how we were feeling okay if we need to have like a follow-up question conversation I want to have the follow-up conversation when the other person's ready but then I want to be past it yeah because I want to keep that friendship obviously Mm -hmm. but sometimes people aren't always ready to move on that timeline and so that's hard for me sometimes is like I want to be done with this and I want to be where we were or moving past what we've done and sometimes people aren't ready to move that fast yeah that's true so and girls are much slower that's true than guys I feel like yeah that's true yeah I don't do that which you know I I I don't Mm -hmm. go back to the way it was I never do because it can't be for me personally like I can't and that happens to like a lot of my relationships um it just it won't go like the way that my brain works it will never go back to the way that it was we can try to like start something new now you know what I mean Mm. so that's tricky yeah but anyway Ron is now going to everyone in the club talking about snake juice which is hilarious um the guy that Ron is talking to apparently is named Micah Femia I I think I found him on Instagram, but I'm not sure because he hasn't posted in a while. So who's to say? But he's been in CSI New York, a movie called Pop Star, which I was not super familiar with. Um, and apparently he's also a composer because he did music for a short film called Haunted Cabin Die Fi. I'm guessing like sci fi, but die fi. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. would be. But I did want to mention to you, too, um, I don't know if you noticed, but the they the, I guess it was more so in the beginning of the episode when they had this snake juice bottle showing um, where the snake juice bottle, they gave a lot of props to the prop department, obviously, um, because they have this like that weird random snake like on the top. And they were just talking about how awkward that would be to handle and how like character like uh indicative of tom's character that he would like approve that <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like the, the the functionality of it isn't yes. there yeah kind of like what we were saying earlier about how his marketing like he he wants it to look right he doesn't care about the the product necessarily right right exactly um and now chris has arrived and sees tom and tom explains snake juice is 140 proof which is 70% alcohol. That's insane. But don't worry, there's plenty of caffeine to keep you awake. <laughs> Which is fair because alcohol does make me tired. Yeah, that's fair too. So, but I love Chris's like one ounce of that would literally kill me. I know. I think it's funny too. Yeah. Which, yeah, he doesn't look like he puts a lot of stuff in his body that he probably would get. Honestly, Chris probably would get really sick by drinking that. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Oh, my God. Yeah. If you don't have something for a long time and then you like have a bunch of it or something that's really potent. Woof. That would when be I think I think he drinks what we've seen him drink is wine, which is probably oh, one yeah. of the most like pure uh, natural forms of alcohol. Right. There's lots of sugar in it. That's true. So it kind of able... depends on which one you get, but like, yeah, I can't. Have, I feel like, the, but I feel like he, if he wanted to keep it pure, at least according to one of my nutritionists that I saw, it would be like hard liquor, like whiskey or Tequila vodka. Or vodka. Or yeah, because yeah, bread is liquid bread. Or, I mean, bread. Beer is liquid bread, <laughs> and wine is liquid sugar. Is what everyone says. Huh. Yeah. But I guess I just look at wine being much cleaner than having like cocktails mm. or like rum chata. I think they're the same, baby girl. I feel like they really? are just because of all the oh, sugar, I'm but you know, myself, it's also then. what works for your body too. Because True. I feel like a lot of people can handle cocktails more than they can handle wine, especially with wine and the mm. sugar. It gives me such headaches, so I have to be careful with it. Um yeah. but 
I don't know. I don't know. It's real. Again, it just works for whatever it works for you. But for Chris in particular, I feel like wine is just like classy or something. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, and let me rephrase. Maybe wine is not the most pure because I think you're right because Ivan's like super into tequila right now. And that's like <laughs> literally just plant. Um, <laughs> but he has been drinking wine on a regular basis. So mm-hmm. his body is prepared for it. Got it. OK. Yeah. That's I will rephrase. Yeah. Not that it's a cleaner alcohol, but more that it's an alcohol he, he chooses to drink so his body is acclimated yes. to it. Yes, yes, okay. This would fuck him up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> fuck everybody up. Yeah. But it really might give him alcohol poisoning if it was for him. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, okay, so Chris says that it was inappropriate for Tom to email all of City Hall because government employees can't use their status to gain wealth personally. And then that she, he says there's no way around it and he's going to have to share his... Um, or sell his shares of the snake hole. It's so sad. Yeah, I part of me here like agrees, like, yeah, you can't do that. But part of me is also like, I was Tom aware? Like, I would love if, if Tom had no idea what he was doing is wrong for this to be like a warning for him. Yeah, I, um, I just don't know. I wrote in my notes that I was like, I got to ask Brooklyn about this because this like, mm. couldn't there be another way? I was on uh, I was with you. And she said that this is a serious offense and he should have gotten fired if it was in an actual. Uh, wow. She was like, we can't even sell Girl Scout cookies. I was like, what? Wow. And it really depends, obviously, on the company. Like, if it's a smaller, maybe, like, little thing, um, which that's why that was the weird part for me, because City Hall or, like, Parks Department seems smaller. So, like, I don't Mm -hmm. in a small town, but whatever. But as we learn, Chris is very, very, this is the rules. These, This is in the book. We cannot be corrupt. Government is not meant to do that. Um, And Brooklyn was saying that they are very strict about you or anything gaining personal um, funds, even if it's for like a charity like Girl Scout Cookies, because you're using the taxpayer's money technically to benefit yourself or Mm -hmm. your company or your fundraiser or whatever it is. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. And she says that they have stuff like that all the time. Wow. Because I was like, that's insane. That's pretty harsh. I know. And so Tom should have known. To answer your question, he should have known. Um, And his later line of like, I got into government for the connections. That's not Mm. the idea for. (laughs) I mean, I get what that's what everybody does. Lots of people work their way up. But apparently that's a very like unethical uh, thing. And Chris is just trying to stand to that. I feel like not everybody in the government has gotten in trouble for. Yeah. Stuff. And again, that's the thing, too. It's like it depends on the company, too. Like I asked my um, I asked my mom because or like it was on a group chain, actually, because, my, you know, mm-hmm. my mom was National Guard. And she, I, I feel like I was like, didn't mom used to sell our Girl Scout cookies? And she's in the military. So isn't that government? And Brooklyn was like, it depends on the the place, the company, but also the military is just so massive that a lot of times they wouldn't have known. And then my mom went off mm. on this whole tangent where like she said everything is being tracked um through another like security detail and a lot of people are being busted for like porn um on their work email or random stuff that they have yeah, like totally What dumbass put porn on their work email? I'm telling you, people are stupid. Oh my gosh. It's insane. The, the, with the whole National Guard piece, though, in my head, and I'm, you know, I have no knowledge around this area, but I feel like they create such a community. Mm, if you're in maybe. the Army or the Air Force or anything, like you, a lot of times people live on bases. So they live, mm. their their whole neighborhood is other people who work for right. the government. So it's almost like that's a natural occurrence for you to go to those people for Girl Scout mm-hmm. cookies. Like maybe not for other stuff, but like. Or maybe not you using know. your work email. I don't know. Yeah. It's so interesting to me. Yeah. But maybe it's, it's also, maybe it's the opposite of what I think too, um, where if you uh if it's a bigger company because i was like if it's a smaller company they shouldn't care but maybe it's the opposite where like if it's a bigger company it's easier to slip through the cracks but with city hall it's like chris is monitoring that slash knows that and is reading his email that tom sent to the entire city hall so yeah i was like shocked when brooklyn said that and she was like people have gotten fired for less and i was like what so anyways wow so, a little wow. backstory on the accuracy of that. <laughs> All right. But like you said, I'm sure some stuff does slip through the cracks. You can't probably oh, yeah. get everybody, but it is really sad everything. that Tom no longer has that part of it. I was thinking maybe he can just like stop snel- selling the snake juice at uh, 
the snake hole lounge. I didn't think that he had to sh- like, you know, straight um, up get rid of all of his sh- his the shares. Share. But at yeah. the same time, everything is going back to the snake hole, so that's where it ends. It's it's wild. But they did yeah. say that on the commentary that they kind of needed Chris to come in because it seemed like this whole thing needed a boss. Like they needed an authority mm. to be around yeah. all of these drunken <laughs> employees. <laughs> Which They're it does wrong. give a balance. That's very true. Yeah. No, but I think I think he needs to be there, and it gives Donna a confidant. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, and it made me. It also made me think about like stuff I've done too, and um, like I have a a charity that I'm like raising money for right now for the Y the Y here, which supports um wine or wine women in domestic violence issues, and we're mm-hmm. giving um we're actually collecting bottles of wine for a really big charity event. And I told my work about it. I obviously asked my bosses about it if I could do it. But then I, so I told Brooklyn about that too. And she was like, yes, but you're not in the government. Like you're in a right. corporate office. So that's like the difference. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Whew. Thank <Yeah>. God. <laughs> well, would it be different to here because this is for charity, not for your own personal gain? Would it be different? I don't in- know. Cause Girl Scouts okay. wouldn't be for my own personal gain. That's true too. Isn't, it is I don't know because I was never a Girl Scout. Is Girl Scout a government funded thing? Uh, it's a nonprofit technically, okay. but like none of the money goes back to the Girl Scout or like to us personally. It just goes to the you know the Girl Scout like right. foundation or whatever. So yeah, that's so interesting. It is very huh. fascinating. But anyway, huh. this is where the boss rap comes in with uh, John Ralphio. Um, and he's just like so defeated at this one. He's like, hey, he knows yeah. he doesn't, he didn't do it right. And this time he can't cut it off and have it make sense. Like, oh my God, it's so funny. Poor John Ralphio. He has so much potential. <sighs> yes. All right. Well, now I'm at to the full fledged fight if you are. Yes, I am. Oh my God. So Leslie and Anna are full fight mode. They're drunk doing that thing. Um, we talked about last week with no offense, but blah, 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 blah. Yes. I love this line of um, offense. That's rude. I want to start saying that if somebody says no offense. Yes. I am taking offense to this. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's funny. I uh, I love the, I didn't realize you had a nursing degree in feelings. <laughs> Great line. Great and then line. that's when she says offense. Um, yes. I love that they go like hate dance with each of their partners. I think that's really hilarious, Leslie. So right next to each other. Right next to each other. Yes, it's like a dance off situation, a drunken dance off, and it's really sad too because Ben comes up and like tries to connect with her, and Leslie, oh my god, go get me another snork juice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Poor Which Ben. She, she wants to. She wants to use him, and I'm really proud that he has enough wherewithal at this point. That he's like, I'm not going to be a pawn here. Like, our our relationship is more than that. So yes. he lets her. And he looks a little jealous when she's dancing with John Ralphio. But he's not like, oh, I'm going to go in and, and step in. Right. He's still like, he's right now defeated. is not my time. He feels so, yeah. he looks so sad. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I I felt the same way where I was like, he's, not, he's just like not as drunk as her. And so he actually has the mindset that I guess they technically should be on. But ugh, it's so sad. But I do love yeah. Leslie's line to John Ralphio of, John Ralphio, dance up on me. <laughs> dance up on me. Yes. I love that line, too. <laughs> Amy Poehler on the commentary said they did so much dancing. They had to cut a lot, apparently, because um, they did get a lot in, too. There was, mm-hmm. uh, there was some in the deleted scenes, but it wasn't anything substantial. It was just, like, more footage of them dancing, which is funny. <laughs> and it's funny. I like that. And I love this moment. This is when Andy and Ben are connecting. Yes. And... I love that he's like, you should role play that you're like her boss or something. And yes. he's like, that is our literal situation. <laughs> I know. And it's funny because Ben's talked to Andy about this. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not like Andy doesn't know that's that that's true. their situation. That's true. So, oh, my but God. It's, a, it's just cute because Andy, you know, this whole night, he. I mean, I just feel like we're seeing a lot of Andy's heart mm-hmm. in this episode. Well, and I think it's nice, too, because... Leslie has Anne to talk to about Ben, but we talked about this, I guess, before, where Ben doesn't really have anyone to talk to about Leslie, so it's nice that they gave Andy to him to kind of, you know, share his feelings with. Um, Did you see the lights behind uh, them as they were talking behind Ben and Andy? No. There's, like, there's huge lights. They kind of look like traffic lights, but they're, like, blue and green. I don't know. I thought it was really cute and I wanted to see it in real life, but it's okay. (laughs) 
Um, there is this song again, by the way, the last call for last call for alcohol. For alcohol. That song yeah. was in the camping episode and where me and Brooklyn were in that episode uh, for the podcast. We tried to find that song. We could not find it anywhere. I tried first, then she tried. I think they made it up for the show and now they can just play it whenever. That's going to be my guess. Here for it. Yeah. It's a great song. Save money, man. Ugh. Yes. Okay, then we're in the infamous fight in the hallway and in the bathroom. This is crazy and so tough, but so funny. They had such a good balance of this. I love the girls trying to get past them as they're talking, and Leslie's like, excuse me. Excuse me. (laughs) That's so good. Yes. I love that. And it's like delayed too. Like the girls already made it past them. Yeah, which is totally. On point for what's happening. I know. And Leslie says that this is where Leslie says she talked to Chris about working with Anne, mm-hmm. and it's totally fine. And Anne's like getting all mad because she's like, "You talked to like him before me." And then Leslie has this talking head of like, "This is my first fight with Anne, and it's a doozy. Just got to keep it clean. All I have to do is focus and stay calm." <laughs> You're stupid and you're drunk and you're stupid. Like I said last week, that will never not be my favorite line. So that's going to be my favorite line because I can't handle it. it. It's just too good. (laughs) It is really good and very on par for the whole situation. For a drunken fight, that is absolutely it. Yeah. Um, This moment, too, where she, she really gets real and is like, sometimes if I don't push you, I love Leslie and she is a pusher. But Anne also made it to a point in her life where she did everything you know she's she's got a good head on her shoulder she's gone through a time mm-hmm. so that almost feels like if that was said to me that would be you don't trust me to make my own decisions and run my own life like that's not your role here your role is to be my friend and my supporter not to make decisions for me mm-hmm. and I think that was a really harsh line I know and it was really hard for me to watch because if um if I can be real that was where I felt the most you and me mm. Be- if I, oh my god I was about to say can I get real a second for like a millisecond yeah, millisecond <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna say where that's from you guys because if you don't know yeah. then you don't Look know if you know you know but anyway no but I um in all know, reality though know. that's also a cl- that's also in the thing what if you don't know now you know Yes, if you don't Boom. know, which that's also a sample from a rap song, but you know. Um, anyway, but look, sorry, Lin Manuel. Back to it. No, but Lin Manuel Miranda like has inspirations from everywhere, so it's totally fine. Yes. Um. Yes. No, but in all, like I said, in all reality, though, like I've I would never actually say that, but sometimes I feel that with a lot of my friends, and now and well, feel I mean felt because. That was a that was a big thing that I worked on in therapy last year was like I felt like Tina Fey in Mean Girls when I was like I'm a pusher and I like mm. I see the potential and for in my head it's not rude because or it wasn't rude because I was like I know how smart you are and how and I say you universally but it could be you too but I'm just like I know how smart you are I know what you can achieve and me seeing you like this hurts me because I know that you can probably be like happier and so to be not happy when I know you could be happy really hurts my heart but then that is was me being a martyr and like that's not my job Mm. to make someone else's life better when they have to make their own choices it's not up to me like you were just saying that's not my fight that's theirs Mm -hmm. and this is my time to support in any way that I can and that doesn't mean that I can't be honest and tell people how I feel but it's not my job and yeah that's where Leslie, especially drunkenly, doesn't see this the second part. She sees the first part of like, Anne, you're so smart. What the fuck? But mm-hmm. she doesn't see like, that's not up to you. That's that's Anne's decision, baby girl. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? And and she's not seeing that that's not how Anne's taking it. Yeah, that's it. That too. Leslie sees her uh, as having higher potential. Mm-hmm. And I think that I put myself in, in Anne's position here, too, when when things like that happen. It's like in this moment, I'm just upset that I'm not feeling not necessarily not feeling supported, but like I'm not seeing you're not feeling heard. that you see more potential. Right. I'm seeing that I'm not being heard because something I have learned about myself, too, is that even if I'm in a, a tough spot, mm-hmm. Even if, because last year was a lot, 
Mm-hmm. Last year was a lot for a lot of different re- reasons. Yeah. So I had a hard time realizing where was I ready to make change mm. and where was I not? And what were my priorities? And as my best friend, you see the potential on the other side of everything. Mm-hmm. And part of that is on me not always being honest with myself or or honest with you or being open about where I'm feeling I'm at with everything, right? But like you're saying too is that's also my decision and something I'm warring with. And as a friend, I always want you to be honest with me and always want you to challenge me, but also have the understanding of maybe she's just not emotionally ready for that Mm -hmm. or not ready for that next step or, or whatever it might be, right? So and I think that there's there's two sides here. I'm not saying Leslie's all in the wrong and I'm not saying Anne's all in the wrong. That's what all these friendships are, right? Totally. Like we all have little moments where we just aren't in line with each other and that's what makes relationships grow. Yeah. Is realizing those things. What's and so a- like what you're saying. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 um, say, it, say what, it. I want you to finish what, your thought your thought. Yeah, what you're saying about how really like for you relationships can't go back to what they are. Mm-hmm. That's almost that's almost better. Right. Because although we might we might not be back here, we can move forward. Yeah. And now that we have that open communication, now hopefully we're going to we're going to move forward better. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, because I feel like going back in history just doesn't help anyone because then you're like always you're using the tools that you're only using like your knife and your like fork when. Oh, wait, I have Mm -hmm. a spoon here. Why haven't I been doing that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because you no, didn't have I'm... that spoon before, but you just yeah. gained it. Yeah. And so that's how I kind of look at it. Um, but also the hardest part in like what you're saying and what we're both saying, I think, is the balance of it. Because with mm-hmm. Leslie and Anne and with so many, this is why it's so relatable to so many women, is like, we don't want to hurt each other's feelings. We just want mm-hmm. everyone to be happy. We want to be supportive and everything. And so like, that's where in the last, especially in the last, like, especially the last like three years with the pandemic and stuff and like realizing that life is too short. It's just like finding that balance of if you're people pleasing and just trying to please your friend, that's not true friendship anyway. Obviously you Mm -hmm. want to be, you don't want to like be hurtful or rude. And that's something I'm working on too, where even my mom will tell me like that sometimes I'm curt to people, but like Mm -hmm. for the most part, I feel like that's just when they're being like rude to me. But with my friends, uh, I at least, and my family, I at least try to like explain where I'm coming from because I don't like people pleasing means that, you know, at the end you'll be hurt. Like you're the one that's actually hurt. And that in that regard, you actually hurt everybody. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I feel like there's not intentionally, but I think when you're people pleasing with your friends, you're putting ahead that them not you not wanting them to be upset with you above mm-hmm. their the real true relationship. Right. Right. So, yeah. But and I believe I this is kind of turning into a therapy session. But who I mean, I knew that was going to happen because we really yeah, so hard this to this episode. <laughs> yeah, we really do. And I think the. That, I mean, just being completely honest, the first time I ever heard you say, I don't think we can go backwards to what we were, I broke down. Yeah. Like, I cried and cried and, like, was really, really upset. And I really struggled with that because what we had was so special to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't is. have that with a lot of people. Yeah. So it, like, hurt. Yeah. But, you know, as you continue to move forward and you and you know, there's also a piece here that people have to realize is that we're not together Yeah, in the same city. Right. If we were together in the same city, I'm not saying we would go backwards. I'm saying it would be easier. Sure. <laughs> because we'd have access to each other a <laughs> yeah. lot more often than we do. But I think that added a second difficulty to all of this was I'm hurt. I'm upset. I knew you were hurt and you were upset. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't like go out to coffee and hash it out. <laughs> right, right. You know, right, right. you know. And so I had to stew in it for a little bit and have to realize what that looked like for you. Yeah. So that I could realize what it looked like for me. Because if you were in a place where you said we can't go back to what we were, I knew that wasn't an option. Mm-hmm. So where am I and what can I give and what what do I need mm-hmm. in the relationship for us to move forward? And what do you need and how are we meeting each other? Yeah. There, you know, so it's it's hard. I mean, friendships are hard. And a lot of people, you know, if it's if it's easy, 
I'm sorry, someday something might come up and well, it's not going to be as easy, easy. That's the thing with adult friendships. It's it's mm. really difficult because you really have to put in that effort because it's not like you're seeing each other in class every day or at work every day right. or whatever. But I mean, and I guess maybe that was... I don't know. Maybe that was something I should have explained a little bit more. But for me, not going back to what we were was not is not a bad thing. Like you were saying, too. For me, it's just like we're starting a new chapter, taking everything Mm -hmm. with us that we had before. And to be honest, I think it's better now just because I don't know. I feel like as I'm getting older and maybe I'm maybe that not many people can relate to this. But as I'm getting older, I feel like I really need that true connection with people and what we had like previously to me personally it just kind of felt like it was all sunshines and rainbows and that didn't feel mm. real once we went through what we went through and so we hadn't gone through anything like that so it's we just, hadn't had our fight episode <laughs> right exactly you know so like there wasn't really there was no way to go back to that after something already happened you know what i mean and mm-hmm. so i kind of like it better that it's not just cuz that's it's just not real and i always say that when p- my friends tell me that they're not close with their sister or close with their mom or whatever they look at my mom and my sister and me and think that we all just have had the best time of our lives the entire mm. time and that's why we're so close but i'm like that's not the reality Like, my mom and I have fought countless times and called each other's names. My sister and I have disagreed 8,000 times. And I say this, um, I I wonder, I can't remember if I said this on the podcast, but, like, when we went to Niagara, my sister and I, we got in, like, this huge fight. It wasn't huge, but we got in this fight, and Mm -hmm. I learned so much about her that I didn't know. And I've known her for Mm -hmm. 30 years. Are you kidding me? I didn't know how she traveled as much. And we've traveled before, but, like, this was one of the ones as adults that we took together. Um, Mm. just us and I learned about her she learned about me but we also I learned how she communicated and we like really hashed it out and we both hurt each other but we were still like had to compromise and it was just like one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced ever because I was just like this is so rare that we can talk about this and then move on and take Mm -hmm. what we know now and move forward so it's very interesting to me how different people relate to the confrontation of it all yeah. And the, the, the fight sucks in the moment. Mm-hmm. It really does. And I think, I think that's something I learned from, especially just even right now is like, I don't know if you knew that I was upset Yeah, with how you phrased it mm-hmm. and how could you have, if I didn't tell you, Yeah, especially when I'm not right in front of you. Right. Right. So how would you have been able to explain to me that not going back to what we were wasn't a bad thing. Right. If you didn't know I was upset. Right. Right. So that that's something I'm, you know, learning too is like, you can't just sit there and be upset about it. You've got to tell people Mm -hmm. why you're upset about it and talk it through and actually understand. Because I agree with you, adulthood, like, I'm I'm tired. I know. (laughs) Like my like with our jobs and with all the stuff we do on the side and like people might not know this, but Holly and I very rarely have free time. Yeah. <laughs> and so like I I get tired and I've realized that I'd rather not go out and make new friendships that are going to be hollow mm-hmm. and keep those friendships where I have the connection. Yeah. Where I can relate with the person. Yeah. Where they challenge me, mm-hmm. where I want to challenge them. I want to keep those relationships right. more than have 20 friends I could call here any day. Right, right. I agree. And I mean, it kind of can go uh, either way, honestly. And you have to be okay with the outcome um, once you start this. Like, there might be a chance, and I know women listening to this can relate, there might be a chance that you won't reconcile, that you've both grown Mm -hmm. so much that we can no longer be connected like really much at all. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You will be grieving But you'll be Mm -hmm. grieving at all parts of the process, regardless if you come back together or whatever. But like some people just grow apart so much and change so much that the people that they uh, were in college that could connect so deeply or connect in high school or whatever it was, or even if it was only like you had two years where you felt so close and now so much has happened and, you know, whatever, like maybe you can't connect the way that you used to. And that's like a friend breakups are real, too. And people don't Mm -hmm. really talk about it as much because it feels like really awkward and strange and um 
that just what it is it just is what it is but like that's a real thing too and you have to let yourself grieve for it because i think a lot of times people are like oh well that's that wasn't like it was romantic like who fucking cares you had a no, moment they were... it stopped and you need to grieve yeah so no if if that was our case and correct me if i'm wrong here i don't feel like our we're at the friendship breakup oh no we're here <laughs> but, yeah we're here um no but I've had friendship breakups in the past mm-hmm. and I put it in perspective here. Like if, if our disagreement had ended everything mm-hmm. that would feel almost like as de- devastating as getting divorced. Yeah. Like, well, because, and I even said that I was like, if fe- at yeah, that point it did if, feel like it a felt like, yeah, because we were breaking what we had la- like the last whatever years and moving on to something different. Right. Which is okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And which I've come to, process and be okay with. <laughs> um but therapy you guys <laughs> yeah therapy i don't like change <laughs> well and i'm gonna be honest with you with the amount of times i i moved around as a kid and i had a lot of people just drop out of my life yeah out of nowhere a lot of times it just fizzles and, too yeah and I, there was specifically some friendships i had in the states where i moved overseas and i came back and they just wanted nothing to do with me hmm and so it was like and you're probably like too young to even like understand what was going yeah, on and they didn't I, have the language to talk about it either. Right. But I think that's why it really struggled for me. Oh, it was a struggle for me to not not think you wanted to go back because for me that in my past it was oh, we're done because past trauma was coming up. Yeah. Without me knowing that it's past trauma. Right. I'm probably right. just now coming coming to term, terms with it. Yeah. But, you know, that makes sense. I think. It all it all like forms how we think through things now. So right. this, that's something I try to be really mindful of is like, don't put these this this experience on what's going on with me and Holly. Right. That's not what it is. But that's where your brain goes, because yeah. that's what you've known. Yeah. So like, that's the thing. But yeah, no, they're 100 percent real. You're losing a part of you. You're losing someone who's supported you through everything who you have really positive mm-hmm. memories of. Yeah. You know, I can't watch. The Office or the Oscars, and not I know. think about Holly. Our times. <laughs> so it's like Watching those breakup songs department. where it's like I can't listen to our songs anymore or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's what it would be like. Well, and sometimes I feel like friend breakups are just like inevitable as far as like we've already had struggles. You were just kind of ignoring mm. it. You know what I mean? So like there's all different well, kinds of layers to it. And that's something too. And so for me, the thing that I've learned the most out of all of this and just in general is just like to just be honest. And like you were saying mm-hmm. too, like say what you need. And if they can't match what you need, then that's OK, too. And if you accidentally hurt their feelings, it's up to the other person to tell you that, first of all. But mm-hmm. secondly, like you can also um edit how you react and the, i i st- i would love i still get over that sometimes i would love people or am working through that like haven't really gotten over that sometimes because i would love for people to just read my mind but you have to ask <laughs> for what you want that's yeah. it you know yeah and 100%. just be okay with we'll that that's, that's the other half of it though is like you can't expect a certain outcome from it because like right. i think a lot of times we think positively and then we're like okay if i do this then i'll get this but what if you don't get that you have to think through all the scenarios at least for me personally i do mm-hmm. um yeah and what's going to be healthy for you yeah continuing to hold on yeah or needing to say i can't yeah. I can't keep doing this. Exactly. And that's why I feel that's why I really feel especially relating it back to this episode is why women's friendships will for me always be more valuable at least for my personal experience than my relationships with my guy friends because guy friends don't want to have this conversation maybe they do with other guys um i don't know maybe and like in their own way but Mm -hmm. for some reason i and i mean sean and i have had deep conversations and lots of fights where um we're like i can't be your friend if you don't do this or whatever (laughs) um but i i don't think i will have like deep relationship with um, some of my guy friends because like I don't feel like they're willing to as willing to accommodate or compromise as yeah. we are I think as women are I think it depends on the guy that's too, true that's because very true. you say that and I think I, and I agree with you uh for the most part but mm-hmm. I think about David oh sure who's yeah. one of my bridesmen he, he would 100% if I said I need to sit down and I need to talk to you he would 100% put the effort in to make changes if he felt like he needed to mm-hmm. Um, and, 
and he would listen. Yeah. And he would tell me how he felt. So that I think it's it's more a male specimen thing that they're not as open to it and it's not really how guy friendships function. Yeah. But I think there occasionally will be a guy where it's his personality mm-hmm. to put the effort in. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Not all men. I get it. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah. I think to- there's also women who wouldn't be willing to do That's this. That's true too. So it, it goes both ways. Everything is layered and it all depends on the person. And look, maybe that person changed what they thought was a change for them and it's still not working for you. And that's that sucks, mm-hmm. but that's fine too. And you have yeah. to do, you have to get out of the relationship what you give. And if what they're giving is not what you need, then that it's just about acceptance at that point Mm -hmm. so yep well (laughs) moving on (laughs) back to our show parks and rec (laughs) we have a friendship that is going to last and they're going to get past it because we're not there yet but when they wake up the next morning they both feel the remorse they both want to put the work in to make it work yeah and that's what matters that is what matters that's so true um I also really thought it was interesting too this um, camera work here in the bathroom, which like we've talked about before, kind of. But I feel like especially with the this scene in particular, like the way that Randall set it up, or however they had Shauna, the camera operator, do it, was so lovely because we're not really the audience is not supposed to like see this, um, and. Apparently, according to the commentary, a lot of this bathroom fight was improvised, which is so incredible. Wow. Like Amy Poehler's line, that one where she was like, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant you were being stupid and acting like a jerk. Like that was Amy Poehler improvising yeah. with Rashida, which I thought was so good. Wow. Well done, guys. Ugh. And then we come back to where this whole thing started was we cut to the core where Leslie says, sometimes if I don't push you, you end up standing still. And she she says she was just trying to do you a favor. And Anna's like, just stop doing the favors then. And then Mm. that really hurts Leslie because Leslie's been told a lot of times she's too much, which, again, I relate to Mm. where. And so now she has to pull it back and keep pulling it back. And it's like, how much can we pull back? But you also have to understand that, again, I'm not going to say it again. Well, I'll say it again one more time. (laughs) that It's not up to you (laughs) what the other person does. And none of this is like we it's not going to be because they're drunk. But none of this is um, I was going to say consistent, but that's not the right word constructive Mm. none of this is constructive because she's not laying out there i'm just trying to do your favors and then and being able to explain why the favors aren't helping her yeah they're just yelling nonsense not nonsense but like jabs at each other and there's no follow through around what's bothering them yeah really yeah and how they can support each other moving forward totally at this point they're just like saying all the shit that they felt and the liquor has loosened their tongue so (laughs) but sometimes you need that too i don't know like sometimes sometimes you you need a push to say your feelings i'm not saying alcohol is always truthful but that whole thing um i don't know that whole thing about like liquor not always being true or liquor only saying the truth i just don't buy any of that it's just like sometimes it you need a little bit of a a push but that doesn't mean that either like you said the next morning is how we handle it you know what i mean like just mm-hmm. because that one night happened that's how and then the solving it is where we get there i don't know yeah but anyway so now chris and donna are talking about the cleanse the broth stage that sounds awful to me that i also wrote a question mark after broth stage i've never went through the cleanses i don't really know if they work i've never done a cleanse because i would my stomach would eat itself. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. They have. I, I don't know. The um. What's the thing? Oh, the juice bar here, which I think they have a lot mm-hmm. in L.A. too. But they have the juice bar, and they do. Um. They do. Well, I don't know if they do anymore. I remember seeing when they had a lot of in-person stores. Now I think COVID closed a lot of them here. But um, they used to have a thing that was like weekly juice cleanse, and you could go in and fill all your bottles and stuff. And I don't know. I've read mm-hmm. reviews because you know me, and you're probably the same mm-hmm. way. Where sometimes I'll like research stuff to see like does that actually help, especially health wise, because I'm always interested in like what's gonna. I don't know, be interesting for or work for my body. And Mm -hmm. I have not read great reviews about juice cleanses as far as like the nutrition aspect of it. If you're going to do that, it's like you would just need to maybe do like fruits and vegetables, like literally just fruits and vegetables slash maybe some meats and that will clean your system out too. Yeah. Unless you do like a colon cleanse. Is that, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that would be. I my, My thing is like, this is how it's always explained to my to me by my mom mm-hmm. because my mom never wanted me to, to I mean she was pretty on on about health mm-hmm. and stuff. So she said if you're going to go on a diet, 
you have to make sure that that diet is now a lifestyle. Because if yeah. you cut something out of your life for a month and then you go back to it, you end up actually gaining the weight back. And actually, it's typically more yeah. than you initially had because your body was getting used to, oh, this is now how we're treating the body. So that's what worries me about a juice, juice cleanse is because it sounds like all you're doing is drinking, which you can't like smoothies and stuff. They can have new nutrients and stuff in it and whatnot, but you're still cutting out stuff that you're going to enter back into your body at the end of the mm-hmm. cleanse and your body's going to be really confused. Well, I think it depends so, on the length too, which was interesting to me because true. they're talking about, it sounds like they're doing like a week cleanse or something which seems scary to me but I yeah. was listening to the Parks and Recollection podcast and Alan Yang had asked Rob Lowe if he ever did a cleanse and he said he had um, mm-hmm. and he asked how long they were and Rob Lowe said like usually only 24 hours or 48 hours okay which makes I'm, sense I can get on board like, with that yeah I feel like that to me seems more like that was the one thing that I appreciated that Rob Lowe said <laughs> out of all yeah. the times <laughs> I've listened to him not ashamed anyway um, it's just really interesting to me um, because that in your mind, in my mind, like my mindset would be this is a like a literal reset for my body, like cleaning mm-hmm. out the toxins and then I can re, you know, acclimate. Yeah, I think even four days is OK to like. But like I always figured juice cleanses were like diets where it was like two weeks. I or think a lot of people use it for that purpose. Yeah. So. So. But yeah. snake juice, which I is feel like basically is rat poison, says Donna. Yes. <laughs> what are you going to say? I feel like what? No, I think I feel like 24, 48 hours is much more reasonable. And I think that would help cleanse your body. I don't know enough to speak on it, but mm-hmm. like I'm I'm more willing to try something that's just 24 hours rather than. Yeah, that totally. Like a week or whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Rat poison. Like they probably both would get really sick at this point if they had any. I think so, too. I also love Donna's green outfit thing. I made a note of that. I like her little neck scarf situation that she has that matches her shirt. It's really cute. Yeah. She always dresses so nice. I know. And then we have our famous talking heads, the famous drunk talking heads. Most of these were improvised. Some were written. I will tell you what they are. Um, But just as a tidbit, you might have found this in your notes, too. But they actually did this each separately. So Mm -hmm. they didn't have other people in the like their other castmates when they were doing it. I thought that was so crazy. Yeah. Which is kind of cool because then you're not like. I don't know about you, but like even if I was working with Amy Poehler for two years, I would be like a little bit more like, okay, I'm doing this in front of these people. Right. You get or a little like you bit don't more have to freedom. match your energy or something to them or whatever. Yeah. 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 So it's cool. It was, it's really cool. Yeah. I love these too. <clears throat> this was my idea that we should have a favorite line and then we should have people vote for their favorite talking head. Oh, totally. I, okay. I love that idea. Well, Leslie is drunk crying. That was improvised, as you could probably have guessed. <laughs> She's like, you don't even do one thing. You do one thing. And I didn't even do one thing. <laughs> um, so good. And Relatable. We, so good. Um, we talked about this last week, too, where Ben does his Baba Booey thing. Do you yes. know what that's from? Yes, it's a nickname for Howard Stern's no idea. producer. I didn't even know it either. That's something I found in my in my research. Same here. I thought it was he was just making a weird sound. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> Apparently, this guy's name is Gary Del Abete. I don't know how to describe or to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Good on you. I didn't even write it down. I was just oh. going to say the executive producer because I was like, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Right. <laughs> well, it became a, a common catchphrase, like you said, among Howard Stern fans and Amy Poehler. And Adam Scott both mentioned that on the commentary that Amy Poehler wrote that in because they're both Howard Stern fans. So cool. they wrote into the show. So wild. Well acted by Adam Scott. Oh, too, so good. Obviously. Um, Tom with his, I'm like an elephant. And when I enter a room, it's like, okay, he's in there. He's in there. <laughs> I love that so I much. Love that. <laughs> um, it's so good. Apparently, Tom's original talking head was Chris can't stand in my way. Nobody can stand in my way. Like, I'm the greatest, blah, 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 blah. Um, I like this one better. I think it's great that it has nothing to do with the rest of the night. (laughs) Yeah, I think it fits more with the whole drunk drunk thing, too. Um, But I also like that it doesn't, like, piggyback back off of anger against Chris. I agree. I agree. Because I don't think we see anger from Tom moving forward towards Chris either. Yeah, I agree. So they're but yeah, yeah. Um, Andy's, which is funny because I have always wanted to know if the subtitles were correct in this episode and they were. (laughs) Okay, I've never looked at the subtitles. I've always just thought you'll have to tell me if I'm right. Okay, yeah, say it. I've always just listened and I thought it says um, farts and boobs or poop (laughs) uh, and love and stuff. 
macaroni salad. Yes, it's it's um it is poop. Okay, but Mike Sure, I think somebody on the um commentary it might have been Mike Sure. Uh, one of them was like, "Wait, does he say boobs?" And it's it is poop. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and he looks again. He's just sweaty, Andy again, which is freaking hilarious. Yeah, love that his eyes are closed, his emotions in it. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, and yes, the random macaroni salad. Um, let's see. April is just saying random things in Spanish. I don't even think she's saying anything. No, the only thing I f- found that somebody online said that she was saying is um, where was it? Something about her house. Mm. Why, I had it written oh, down. Oh yeah, I, I saw. I did hear "casa" at the end. Being, being an American. That's what I remember it, it saying. Being an American, I have a right to my house or something oh. like that is what somebody said. They thought she said. However, and no offense to Aubrey Plaza, but my husband is Mexican, and he, when we watched the Sister City episode, mm-hmm. he was like, "Her Spanish is really not good," so she could just be, yeah, making shit up. Yeah. So yeah, we did learn in our research as well that like. She doesn't, it's not like her first language or anything. Um, Right. She is Hispanic and she can like understand it, I think is what the quote was, but Mm -hmm. she doesn't really speak it very much. So yeah. Right. So she could just be slurring stuff together. Totally. Um, Anne calls this stranger a bitch and points at her and all that stuff. (laughs) So much. Apparently the scripted version was Anne like bent over and just making random noises. Like, I don't know, like both throwing up, but also just like angry noises kind of thing this one was much better too <laughs> this is better yeah much better totally yeah uh jerry just has no idea what's going on and coughs and then obviously our most famous gif of all time which is ron dancing with janet snakel's hat <laughs> this is my favorite this is my favorite and they did a great job because april was not wearing the hat in her talking head oh yeah great call great so call. i went back to check because i was like must check um, but yeah, so he, I love that. Me it's too. so off who he is. I just, yes, I love it so much. Oh, so good. Well, now I'm at where they're driving home, if you are. Yes. Okay, well, Jerry's on the roof. <laughs> yes. I love this um, little detail that I don't think I really noticed before, um, where Donna asks, like, is everybody in here kind of thing? And Jerry's on the roof. Um, and Anne took a cab, which I think is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Leslie says, your mother's butt. And there's that famous John Ralphio line at the end of, I'm so alone. (laughs) I'm so alone. Yes, I love that. Poor guy. This is where, and you probably saw this maybe in your research too, but this is where Leslie says that this was like the most fun she's ever had, like on set with people. I saw that. Yeah. She said that in the commentary, which is probably where these articles got it. But um, yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah, it's super sweet. Yeah. We have a hot mess waiting for us at the office the next morning. Oh, my God. I love that framing of her feet sticking out of the desk and she just gets up really fast with her hair all frazzled. Oh, my God. And then Ben is looking awful, too. And he says he's doing great. But then he said he threw up in the shower. (laughs) I ran a 5K this morning. Really? Really? No. I fell (laughs) threw up in the shower. Ron is doing great. He thrives in this environment. He brings burgers and fries for everybody to soak up the alcohol. Um, it's because he has his uh his thing uh where he like puts wet socks on oh, and, yeah. and stuff like that. He has his little although how he was so wasted, how did he remember to do that? Woof. Oh my god. But well that's whatever. just like that episode we already got there, I think or we already did that episode where he like drank sixteen whiskeys and Leslie has the little um yeah. the little chart the or whatever. Chart. Yeah. April has pillows taped around her head. I thought that was really Love funny. Love it. I want to do that. I know. I also really love the um, the song thing that Ron sings. First, you take the cow to the killing floor. Killing floor. <laughs> that was my so second gross. favorite line. It's so it's funny. Oh it's my good. god. I like it. But as they're interviewing, I feel like they're holding it together pretty decently. But then when anybody leaves, they like immediately go back into their drunkenness. And Leslie says she owes Anne like a million apologies. And she says mm-hmm. she owes Ben one too, but she doesn't know what for. And when Ben asks if she's okay, and then she says she's sad, it was just so, her facial expression, woof, it was so like remorseful and just sad. And then she has that thing where she crosses out Jan's name of the PR department things and says leslie how could you oh it's so cute heartbreaking yeah it's all coming to a head Mm -hmm. it's that regretful moment of how things transpired yeah um and i think that's something i learned in uh 
you know, last year too is it's much easier to just come forward and say, hey, can we chat about this? Mm -hmm. Then for it to come to a head and it be Worse. messy and angry. Yeah. Because neither of these people, and I know in our situation too, anything that was said that was not, that was taken as mean or, you know, that made somebody feel bad was never the real intention. Yeah. But if you let things go too far and go too long, that's what happens. Right. So hopefully they've learned from this situation and moving forward, they're going to have those open conversations rather than having regretful mornings. Right. Totally. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Yes. Um, I also, this is yeah. like a side, but like the where they're doing the interviews, is this, isn't this where they do the disciplinary, the disciplinary thing after Leslie's house? Um, this this little conference room. Oh yeah, I think so. I think that you're right. Yes, 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 yes. I didn't even think about that. That's very familiar. Yeah, yeah. I recognized it, but I was like, oh. yeah, totally. They've used it before. I think. At least it looks like it. I don't know if it's the exact same, but. Um, I really like this depiction here of when April's being Janet Snake Hole with Jerry, and she still has like her 1920s accent because she's the youngest one, so she could probably bounce back the fastest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was really yep. funny. Yeah. Super awesome to see also, Jerry be like, ugh, to April. <laughs> yeah. Part of me was trying to think, like, why is she still trying to, like, hold on to this? Mm. Good you know? question. Like, you know, it's interesting because everybody else is kind of like, I just want to forget about last night. Last night sucked. Yeah. Like, but, like, part of me is like, I wonder, like, she just had a lot of fun with Andy and that's why she wants to still live in it. Or, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I don't know. She doesn't. She doesn't like her job and wants to be Janet Snakehole or I don't know. Right. But oh, interesting. It's interesting to me yeah. that she was holding on to on to that. Right. That's so fascinating. Well, speaking of which, the funniest shoe shine moment ever. Andy is oh shining Kyle's shoes and April comes up trying to be Janet Snakehole and Angie just can't handle it. But he also knows that he hurt her feelings when he's like, OK, I love you, but please stop talking. Like, can't do it. And mm -hmm. I thought that it's so cute, like that they're both trying to please each other and make each other happy somehow, even though they're not feeling it at the same time. Yeah. No. And we see more Andy putting April above himself be when he does stand up and like tries to. Yeah. To put something together for her. You right. Know? I also love that the whole like his no offense actually seems seriously like I mean, no offense, mm -hmm. baby girl. Yeah. But I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. No, because he's not. I don't think he's saying something offensive. No, I think he. I think he's coming from a place of I'm going to say something, and you might be sad that I'm saying it, but it's nothing against you or right. how I feel about you. Also, major props to all of the cast for playing both drunk and hungover really well. Very well, <laughs> yeah, very well. That was lovely. Like to the point where I thought they were all drunk filming this. Totally. Like, that's how good it is. Ugh. And I love the idea of having Kyle come in, like someone we already know, especially since he's talking about something serious. He says that the doctor is like, it could be serious, but it might not be kind of thing. I love that mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. Um, so good. This puking moment. Oh, my God. It's Peak Parks editing. It's so good. Apparently, um, so I don't know if it was in... I think it was in the commentary where they added a, um, added this. It was not in the original airing, which is so insane to me because that's like one of the biggest parts of this episode. And like little pieces of Aubrey Plaza being Janet Snakehole, like they added that into the producer's cut too. So wild. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. But it's yeah, so no, good. Oh my God. Monumental when, for me. <laughs> when, yeah, totally. Very monumental when Andy stands up and like can't really handle it and just like flops back down. It's so good. Poor Kyle. Oh, my God. I love the Kip Hackman is the twin brother of Burt Macklin. Like, why wouldn't you have the yeah. same name? Shit, that's the kind of name. <laughs> well, now we're at where John Ralphio is with Tom because he bought the snake hole lounge shares that Tom had. And I love this amazing Donna John Ralphio exchange because Donna still owes snake hole uh, shares. Um, but I love that snitches get stitches. Stitches. I just love hearing John Ralphio like back down like she's the tiger and he's like the little prey you know what i mean she's the only one that scares him yeah like, he's not scared of ron love it yeah oh my god um i love this like little foreshadowing moment of ron sees what happened and how tom is all sad mm -hmm. but then we cut to ann's house if that's where you are yes and I love this. Yes, it's so special because like we talked about last episode, we don't really see Ben and Anne together that much. Um, but Ben yeah. comes to her house and she's wearing snow pants because she thought she might go sledding last night. And I love that cut. I love to, the cut. <laughs> the 
through the green sunshine, no snow in sight. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Great Checks job of too. her like hair and eyeliner being a mess. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. So good. She goes right back to laying down on the couch. Yes. And um, she says that the fight was so high school, like getting drunk at a bar about boys. Um, and yeah, we had talked about Leslie being the tie between Ann and Ben. And I, th- I I don't know if they've ever been together alone, Ann and Ben, right now. I think this is their first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think so, too. Which is really special because it really just shows how much they both care about Leslie. I think it's illustrated so well here. Um, and then she says, what the hell is in snake juice? Demerol? I didn't know what that was. It's an opioid uh, painkiller. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty heavy duty. Apparently it treats pain. I've never taken it. Yeah. So I'm guessing it would have, is it like, um, oh my God, what's the big one? Uh, oh my God, I can't remember. It's the one that starts with an M, huh? Or it's like you're always giving, giving it like after you have surgery. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Well, either way, it's a pain medicine. Vicodin is what I was Morphine. Thinking. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Similar uh, to both of those. Funny that we came with that. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's not an over-the-counter. You got to be prescribed Demerol. Right. That's my assumption from my research. Ugh. And I love this. I'll just straight up know what Demerol is right. just for people to know. Totally. I had <laughs> never heard it. about it. I had. What's the other thing? I feel like I had to look up something else that she had said. Oh, the one... Uh, Paxil, when she said, do you want me to prescribe you yeah. some Paxil? So I like that they are bringing like medical jargon in here to show that Anne really is a nurse. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I love this nice line that Ben has of, I don't know you that well, but Leslie loves you, which means you must be a good person. And how he mm-hmm. wants her to know that Leslie always like says what a great friend Anne is and how much she means to her. And then this prompts Anne to say, you know, I can see why Leslie likes you. And I just love this cute little giddy moment that Ben has. Like, likes me? Yeah. What? Wait, she likes me? Did she say? What? Come on, man. <laughs> You knew. So She's funny. not subtle. I know, totally. Just ask her to the prom, rent a limousine. I'm sure she'll say yes. Yeah. Love it so much. Love it. And then we see a nice little paternal moment from Ron, where Ron's talking to Chris about Tom. And Chris, I love that Chris yells to Ben. It's like, is there anything we can do? But Ben isn't there. I thought that was really sweet, though, that Ron's trying to stick up for Tom. Yeah. This is a really nice gift he gets for Tom, Oh, that's too. so nice. That was a really nice so touch. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice touch. Well, now Leslie and Ben are interviewing Dennis Cooper. So I like that we actually get to see him instead of just talking about him. Um, yeah. He's the one who put up all the signs about Jan Cooper. He he's played. Oh, what'd you say? He wants his job back. I know. You sound just like her. Um, he's His name is Harvey Alperin. This was another name that Amy Poehler knew off the top of her head on the commentary. It was so lovely. He, she really commented, uh, complimented on him. Uh, commented and complimented him is what I meant to say. Um, he's been in the movie called The Artist, which I was like, I think it was an Oscar award winning or nominated movie, but I haven't actually watched it yet. Um, mm-hmm. Two episodes of Euphoria, Pen 16, NCIS, uh, Yellowstone. Like he's done a lot of stuff, but. Wow. He was great. He was so pitiful. It was really sad. Yeah. Very well acted. And then we have our lovely moment of Anne coming in. But she has her shirt on backwards and inside out. (laughs) That checks out. And she's, they're both, the whole interview, which I don't know how you know that she's qualified based on the questions they ask her. Right, totally. The whole interview is just like an intervention for their friendship. Absolutely. And... I love this line, too. This could probably be my third favorite line after everything else. Um, Lots of regret and shame should be the official slogan of Snake Juice. Yes. So I love that, too. And I love that they're, like you said, it's an intervention. So I love that they're not really talking about each other forgiving each other. They're talking about could this committee forgive the other person? This Mm -hmm. candidate could kind of thing. That was really sweet. I thought so, too. I like it. I love that line, too, of like, I could also talk about my qualifications for this position, but first I'm going to go throw up in a wastebasket. <laughs> Do you mind if I join you? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I love this little smack that Leslie gives Ben, like on the shoulder with her little book as she's walking away. It's so sweet. Like, oh, yeah. I know what you did. That was really nice. Thank you. Yeah. It was a really sweet little little moment between them. Yeah. And then now I'm at where Anne is back the next day, if you are. Yes. Okay. Well, so Leslie has this talking head thing where she says, we learned that Anne comes in for another interview um, the next day and she nailed it. She talked to Chris and I love this deal they struck up. What a great compromise. I think it's great. I love it. And she yeah. and, and like 
it's funny that we're doing so many like comparisons. Yeah. But for me, for me, if I could get that sort of deal, mm-hmm. I'd be so on board. But there is an emotional part of me that is aligned with Anne where it's really hard for me to I understand what's what it's doing to me. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to give up your passion. Yeah. So that's that's where our, every time I watch the show, I'm like, if I could find some sort of way to make that my reality. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's helpful, too, because like um, for Anne anyway, it's just like she I don't know if she had this like emotional thought or if it was just me as an audience member. But like it sounds like she kind of came to the ter- to terms with the fact that like she's still doing her passion just in a different way, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, for just a friendly reminder, um, that she struck up a deal where she could be a nurse, um, part time, and the PR director also part time, so they can. What is it? She keeps her job two days, so two days a week as a nurse, and then the rest of the days as the PR director. Um, yeah. I also really liked Anne's outfit here. Um, she had this cute little cardigan and skirt. I thought it was so cute. Yeah, everything's uh, on the right way. Yeah, <laughs> nothing's inside out. And then this is where we see the shot of Ron giving Tom uh, the snake juice. And um, all of this is under Leslie's talking head, which is so famous and so perfect. I use this gif all the time. I'm shocked at myself that it's not my favorite line, but I just can't beat the you're stupid and you're drunk and you're stupid. You're stupid. (laughs) We need to remember what's important in life. Friends, waffles, and work. Or waffles, friends, work. Doesn't matter. But work But work is last. (laughs) <laughs> but work is third. Such a wonderful yes. line. I love that so much. It is. It's a really good reminder sometimes, too. I'm really bad at the whole we go with 110% thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because there's so much structure with work and not so yeah. much structure in our personal lives, it's much easier to give 110% right. where there's structure. Yeah. Well, and I think also, I don't know, I think this kind of goes with relationships too, but like, I don't know. I feel like especially this year, um, you know how I said my word was less for this year? I feel mm-hmm. like one of the things that ties into that layer, it, or, or maybe it's too layered, but for me it makes sense, is like... Things aren't that serious all the time. Like, Mm. like, it's just not like life is really short and things are serious. Obviously, like you have to find and pick and choose the battles that you want to fight. But like sometimes with relationships and work and whatever, like what if we just took it a little bit less seriously (laughs) and we're just like, okay, that is what it is. Like, I know that's way harder said than done. And that's coming from someone who did not ever say think that she would say that because that's not who I was but what I mm-hmm. am learning and becoming is just like let's just like try to be as truthful as possible and not take it as like hard as we used to because I, and that's not to say that I'm jaded although a part of that's probably true in some regards but other parts of it is just like that that anger that frustration that like resentment or whatever it just doesn't serve me and it takes so much fucking energy which is another reason why yeah. I don't do as many smiley faces it's just like it's, it's a lot of energy to expend if you're not getting it back mm-hmm. yeah so yep Anyways, um, now we're at the tag, if you are. Yes. Um, I, I'm not, I like, I don't need this tag. <laughs> I don't either. Oh my gosh. That's exactly how I feel. They could have totally kept this out and I would have been happy. Yeah, I don't need it. Like, I would have rather cut that than cut the coffee pot thing. You know what I mean? Oh, 100%. Like, yeah, I didn't need this at all. And I don't, I don't, I'm kind of like, Anne and Leslie look a little proud. Yeah. They're, they're being like, mentioned and I'm like. This doesn't check out for me. They're laughing too much because yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess everyone's just having a nice time. But Tom is listening to Crazy Ira and the douche on the computer. And the douche says he was like, like just explaining his night at the snake hole lounge. And the douche is talking about Anne and how she spent the whole time talking to Leslie and how they were basically lesbians. And then Tom is like banging his desk <laughs> laughing. And I don't know. It's really weird to me. And Ben's face was how we felt, I think, because he has a yes. look to camera where he's like, what the what is going on? What the hell's happening and why? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. but that's the end of the it. episode. I think it's a weird end, it but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. We're going to pretend we didn't end on it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to pretend we ended on the Friends Waffles work line. Yes. But yeah, that exactly. was the fight. What so an episode. What an episode. So good. So good. We are trucking right along. It's kind of crazy. We don't really have that many episodes left. In season yeah, three. Especially in season three. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yep. next week or next time we see you, whenever that is, will be road trip, which is so crazy because I feel like we've waited forever to get to that episode, mm-hmm. especially regarding Ben and Leslie. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget to rate and review us. Also, um, it's been really fun. Last week was a nail biter for I posted it on our Instagram for the best line vote. Um, it was like people just kept on like moving the scales and so it was really nice to see that i posted the winner and i also highlighted it if you would like to see um they're all highlighted by the way on our page like if you ever want to check out who our guests were or anything like that like you can just scroll through if you care um but yeah so thanks for hanging in with us and we will see you on the next episode which is exciting yes we'll see you next time okay have a great week everybody There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too.